Welcome to Somnia True Silver Championship Second Edition. My name is Nimsh, and I'm here with Sodal and Raven to bring you the grand final. Only two players remaining after three days of games. We started with a Swiss, and we had the group stages, and today is single elimination bracket, best of five, last year standing, only two champions remaining. One possible champion, actually. Yeah, I mean, both of these players are champions in my heart, though, Nimsh. Uh, Ness is carrying this, the, the hopes and dreams of the UK on his shoulders, and Dog representing North American pride as well as Team Liquid. Interesting quirk, both the Redemption final and this final ended up as UK versus Team Liquid. Yeah, it's really crazy. And with the uh, sheer volume of players that aren't from the UK here, it's definitely not something you'd expect. So kind of cool for us, especially you know, just for the event in general. But, you know, who would have thought you see both lineups going into, you know, UK versus foreigners. That's pretty, pretty cool. Absolutely. And, and we actually talk a lot about those players, but for the people who are joining in at the very moment, Raven, can you talk more about Ness? Um, maybe, are, are you guys friends or have you met him first time here? No, no, we're friends. We used to be on the team together, um, pre previous to the team he's on now, actually. And uh, he's a player who's been uh, been around for a, a fair amount of time, been to a fair few, uh, few Insomnia tournaments himself. Uh, but I think recently he's really started to just come on leaps and bounds in terms of his play, uh, which is definitely all down to being teammates with me at one point, which is 100% you know, true. Uh, so, yeah, and I think in, from his previous Insomnia performance, I think he finished top 16, I think. Um, he's just he's played so much better this time and he's you know again he's proven that he's gone all the way here he's now in the finals uh, with even more solid play in general so really impressed with how he's gone and Solo, what about, what do we know about dog like dog is a great player and he was in many finals he actually um, I don't remember the name of the tournament but I know he recently won one as well yeah I mean dog's a fantastic player has a huge stream one of my personal favorite streams to watch actually he's a really entertaining stream his chat is actually great as well it's actually a, a great place to hang out um, Plays around with a lot of trolley decks on stream sometimes, doesn't play the optimal stuff, but he's one of those players that can really switch it on when it comes to tournament time and, you know, bring the best decks, play them well. He's brought a somewhat unique lineup here, really the only mage that we've seen. Freeze mage kind of forced out of this format because of the lack of a ban, but he's brought the tempo mage, been incredibly successful with it, managed to get one of those big Sorcerer's Apprentice Exodia turns off in the previous yeah. round and jam together a bunch of fireballs. So yeah, hugely impressive player and no surprise that even out of this stacked pool, Dog is one of the players to rise to the top and be here in Grand Finals. Uh, talking about the games today, let's let's look at about, about the, at the bracket and see uh, what was the way of those guys to the finals and who they defeated. So uh, the first thing that uh, I see here is Ness actually defeating and eliminating Life Coach from G2. Yeah, it's pretty much taken down a Titan, to be honest. Uh, so, you know, Life Coach is known as just one of the most consistent and best players uh, for, for pretty much since Hearthstone's began, more, more or less. And that, I know that for Ness as well, that was a big deal. Everyone respects Life Coach as a player. And probably almost always just you don't want to meet him in the tournament at all because he's just he's so thorough and, and just puts so much thought into every single turn. Very intelligent player, but he did manage to topple him. And then he followed on play, uh, going against Camelon and uh, a few crazy games there. But that was a pretty convincing win from... Uh, from the match, uh, I think it was 3-1 across against Camlin. Uh, so yeah, but really strong run for Ness, really impressive. And on the other hand, Dog had to fight Zale from US as well. And um, well, that's, Zale is a very tough opponent, Solid, right? Yeah, absolutely. Huge amount of respect for Zale as a player. He really burst onto the scene with a fantastic performance at uh, one of the ESL Legendary series uh, about a year ago. So. Uh, he made a big splash there, and uh, Dog is was you know maybe unfortunate for North America's hopes to come up against uh, Zale in the first round of the of the top eight. But um, Dog also, of course, vanquished Firebat in round one of the Swiss. So he's been kind of cannibalizing his nation's hopes as he goes along, and he's now carrying them all with him. But the the la the second or the semi-final match that he had against Powder was particularly exciting. You know, the Tempo Mage game that we talked about briefly, but also that Control Warrior mirror yeah. where the the Golden Monkey Chanel really exploded and even though he got Malorn did dog which is usually one of the keys to winning that kind of fatigue battle wasn't enough because powder was able to get so far ahead before the golden monkey even came down absolutely and that's what happened today yesterday they had to go for the group stages and on day one they had to qualify to top 16 through the Swiss with 100 people we actually talked to the players yesterday so let's hear their thoughts getting through the top eight feels pretty good pretty good the level of competition was pretty crazy. I mean, there were tons of big names here. You didn't have to just beat the big name once. You had to like beat a big name, and then you're like, oh my goodness, I hope I don't play against another big name. But of course you have to if you win, because you know, Swiss, if you're like 2-0, you play another 2-0, and most of the pros are, you know, getting good wins. So yeah, it was pretty stacked and really hard to get past Swiss. 
So I used to kind of get nervous or feel pressure coming to events, but I've been to so many at this point, it doesn't really phase me. I mean, I'm uh, pretty logical, I guess, and kind of just use that for my advantage. Other than that, I don't really ever get tilted, so it's good. I'm really happy that I got through to top eight. Just like last time when I made it, I was exhilarated. Competition's been really tough. The biggest challenge for me was playing on stage for the first round, so I had to play against Soleil on stream, and I knew his lineup was favoured against mine, and the pressure of being on stage as well, it kind of gets to me sometimes. My mindset for going into top eight is to just keep calm, keep trying my best, think about what my opponent will play first, and try and predict the right one and pick the right deck. To my opponents, you might not have known who I was before, but hopefully you know who I am now after some good performances. You might think Priest is an awful class, but I think it's good, and I'm ready to show you that it can beat your lineup. Well, so far so good. The Priest really works for, for Ness here, and uh, he also mentioned lineups. So let's talk about the lineups. Raven, uh, what does stand out for you in those? Uh, what do they bring, even? Yeah, so um, Dog is going to be playing his Tempo Mage, his Control Warrior, and his Rogue versus Ness's. Uh, pretty, a pretty st standard mid-range Druid, um, his Control Priest, and his mid-range Warlock, which is really interesting. But I think one of the things that really jumps out is uh, Dog's Rogue versus this lineup seems like it could be really strong and potentially sweep the whole set. Yeah, Dog's Rogue definitely does have the potential to be really oppressive. You know, the Druid is a potential roadblock. That's a relatively 50-50-ish matchup, but if he can get ahead of that, big advantage against the Priest, even though the Priest does have access to that Harrison Jones that Ness has teched in for this. And, I mean, we can all theorize about the weird lock matchups all we want. I'm pretty sure there's only two people that know the matchup yeah. information <laughs> on that deck inside out, and that's the two people that are playing it in this tournament, Ness and Vore Control. Yeah, I think the thing with the Warlock, or at least like my, my initial thoughts on the way that works versus the Rogue is, because there aren't really too many like big burst turns or particular huge threats, the Rogue can very easily set up a big uh, ball clear with Blade Flurry and then right. potentially finish the game. It just plays, from what I've seen of it at least so far, just a lot of solid minions and builds the board and just has those removal tools that the Warlock's known to have. So I think the Rogue is well equipped to deal with that, but he has to hit the matchup first. Yeah, Absolutely. it makes sense. I totally agree with that in theory, but you know, there's there's still the potential. There's a couple of cards in there that maybe yeah, we don't know about that can come out and change things, so who knows? There's also a very important information that Ness actually faced Doc in the Swiss part and he won 3-0 with a Druid deck. It was with different lists because the players had an ability to, after going through Swiss, to change their decks for top 16 and top 8. So now Dog is playing different decks. Uh, he was playing um, and double Ancient of War, um, Druid with Sylvanas. Druid, yeah. Yeah. He's not playing Druid at the moment, so um, the decks are different. But then Ness has this advantage that, hey, I, I won versus Dog before, I've won versus him in this tournament. Yeah, very much so. And if he had a 3-0 sweep with Druid last time, he might just feel confident jamming his Druid again and seeing if he can get on that, that train he got on in the Life Coach series where he just starts ripping that Innovate Emperor every single game. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing Dog's Tempo Mage again because I, I was casting his, his last set and it was just so insane. Like all the crazy stuff with the, the duplicate into the, you know, with the Antonidas. Right. Um, and, and, and that was so crazy with the, the Sorcerer's Apprentice as well. So many weird things that can come out of that deck that aren't really too common to play against, actually, because Tempo Mage isn't a deck you've really seen in a lot of tournaments recently as well. So it's going to really test Ness's uh, memory of playing against that deck. Yeah, the end of that series was just bizarre because I'm pretty sure he wanted to. Crossbolt or Arcane Blast, his own Sorcerer's Apprentice, yeah. off the board so it didn't get duplicated. He ran out of time and was like notably angry about it, but then the, the Sorcerer's Apprentice getting duplicated actually ended up winning him the game with that big, <laughs> like, insane Yeah, not turn, using the so. Frostbolt as well. Yeah, exactly. And he, he ended exactly. up going Fireball, right, Fireball, yeah, Fireball, so Frostbolt. It's <laughs> an absolutely crazy ending to that game. Masses of burn in one turn, but um, yeah, that, that, I think the key points in, these, in this matchup are Dog's Rogue and Ness's Druid. I think those are the two keys overall. Um, that can really come out and, and get a lot of work done. Dog choosing to lead out here with his control warrior and Ness queuing up the weird lock here. So, um, yes. again, we can kind of theorize, but this is a, a zoo-ish deck early with bigger minions and still the warlock hero power, which Solo. is always key. Go on. Are you saying he has to emulate the zoo experience? 
He does have to emulate the zoo experience. Yes, he wants to get a strong early curve, but the important thing about this deck, and one of the things that really beats Warrior, regardless of what Warlock deck you're playing, is just the Warlock hero power. You just keep tapping, you keep high on resources, you make sure you play around Brawl, because that's about the only card that really, like, multiple for ones you, and then you can just outdo the Warrior on resources over time. Definitely, but uh, my concern here is that this deck might be too slow. Yeah because it doesn't really have all of the zoom minions. It has the late game, but it's not, not a handlock as well. Right. So having those um, weird minions and mostly removal might not be successful versus Warrior, where Warrior would just uh, be really stable with uh, how he armors up, builds up a big armor stack, and then just uh, throws the big the big creatures on board. Yeah, exactly. And even looking at Ness's opening hand, it's not fantastic. Um, the heal bot's just not going to come down for quite a while. Um, as that's, you know, the control warrior's never really going to pressure you that early unless something's going terribly, terribly wrong. Picking up the second in Gang Boss is actually pretty nice. You can go into it and quite freely go into it next turn as well as potentially playing the abusive into, say, an armor smith or something. Right, and the important thing here for the M Gang Boss is that there's no death spite to immediately answer it. So it's a really nice minion to have now on that. Acolyte of Pain is a pretty efficient answer to a, an Imp Gang boss a lot of the time, but that just curves perfectly into this abusive Sergeant Imp Gang boss follow-up now for Ness. Yes, yeah, so definitely a good start for Ness right now. Oh, he decides to tap instead of... Uh... Interesting. Yeah, I thought I was actually going to say, I thought he, he can go for this, but I definitely feel just building up the board is going to be pretty nice here. Um, as you're not really under threat of a, of a brawl with just two Imp Gang boss and an abusive on the board. Right. Uh, and you've seen, no, you know, you've seen no early weapon at least, so... Yeah, we're a very interesting one there. It's one of those situations where there's a lot of individual bodies on the board, so it looks like a good brawl, but it's like when they brawl like an implosion, right? Yeah, it's, it's like, so like, low in terms power. Of, like, yeah. In terms of actual resources, you haven't really picked anything up. So. All right, so he still has this abusive, and uh, he picked up Brand, so he might be able to use it later in the game to just uh, double the, the attack. Uh, now a very good turn for Sludge Vulture. No different play available there, I guess. And this is the really interesting part about this Warlock deck. Like, it doesn't, or at least I feel, it doesn't do any one thing amazingly well, but it just puts good minions on the board every turn. It yeah, plays double Argus. We see the craziness that can happen with Bran with the additional buffs. It still plays AoE if it needs to. It's just like a, the, the sort of Swiss army knife of Warlock decks, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really good analogy. And again, I mean, the, the facility that allows you to keep doing that is that life tap ability. Yeah. So you can just you know, keep jamming stuff on the board, keep tapping if you need an answer. You've drawn so many cards, you're likely to have it in your hands. So it's just a really great tool. And I, I gave the stat earlier of I believe we've seen 10 different Warlock decks on stream in this tournament. Just purely on stream. There may have been more you know, yeah. throughout the Swiss or whatever. And the thing that facilitates all that flexibility in Warlock is just that hero power. Because you can put any collection of cards in your deck. Being able to draw up to two cards a turn just with your hero power just makes it so much more consistent. Over. Absolutely. And we talk a lot about Warlock. What about Warrior? I think for Dog, this hand is actually quite good if you play a, 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 well against the Zul similar deck. Because he can coin Dr. Boom. He doesn't do go for it, but he has tons of removal, executes, shield slams, then double revenge. Yeah, this is what the Warrior deck specializes in. Uh, the, the newest version of Control Warriors, or the most recent one, it's just all, almost all removal. Then you just go into that, um, go into the Elise and potentially the Monkey to uh, to end the turn, uh, end the game. Sorry, late game. So um, he's, he's looking pretty good with the Shield Maiden down. He's not under any real threat from the Warlock now, and this is one of the problems Ness may have where because the deck doesn't really do anything like crazy, then like the, the warrior is built to deal with something like this, I feel. In a way, but uh, Dog will have to really value his cards. We've mentioned at the very beginning that Lifetap is giving cards to Ness, and at some point Dog might just run out of threats. So how does Dog have to play to be able to keep his cards still and be able to uh, respond to the board? So one of the big mistakes that people will make when maybe trying out this deck when they're not particularly experienced is like they assess you know every card in their hand as a resource and they work out how they want to use it. They don't assess their life as a resource. So with a lot of times with this deck, once you're against an opposing deck that can just keep going and keep going and keep going, you have to use your life individually as a resource. And sometimes the right play is do nothing or do very little to cause your opponent to overextend and then get better value from the cards that you have in your hand. And so that's one of the big keys against a deck like this. But one other point about this matchup that I just want to quickly gloss on is, sure, this deck isn't as aggressive and floody and fast as Zoo normally is, but one thing it does have in the late game that's crucial that we haven't mentioned yet is Lord Jaraxxus, yeah. which single-handedly can crush Control Warrior out of the game. 
Yeah, exactly. And this is one of those boards you were talking about where the board's sort of built up, but it is, what, six power, which to, to a control warrior isn't too much of a big deal. And uh, as you just said, said, there's the Lodger access. So kind of nice that he just has that ready to go on demand because I feel like control warrior, uh, you're not really afraid of burst. The odds on them just grabbing you down are quite low, especially this early in the game. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wouldn't be too surprised if next turn, he, he, he plays this turn while trying to set up Draxus for next turn to just get those repetitive 6-6s. Six because then Brawl comes down, fine, you clear the board, guess what I'm going to do next turn? Generate a 6-6 six, six for right. two mana, as well as play one of the many, many other cards in my hand. Especially yeah. because he has Defender of Argus as well, so those 6-6s, six, 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 if he is not dead, he can actually turn them into taunts and protect himself. Yeah, and even like, imagine like that. I mean, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but imagine a brawl and they just plays Dr. Boom Hero Power for like after the Draxus. I mean, that's just insane. Right, I mean, say you were playing Hamlock right now and you were assessing your quality of your hand as a Draxus hand, you'd say it was pretty spectacular, right? You have the Hillbot to stay alive, you have a Shadow Flame to blow up a 6 6 for a board clear, you have Defender of Argus to put up a wall. So the quality of his hand for playing in the Draxus form is excellent right now. Um, so, yeah, he's in pretty good shape, and I totally agree with you, Raven. He should probably be just trying to set up that Jirax yep. as quickly as he possibly can. There is the concern of uh, Harrison Jones that oh. he does have to consider, though. Yeah, Ness just messed up a little bit and locked in the Defender of Argus before the boom bot actually killed the minion, I think. So he just missed there, just a, a bit of a laugh to himself as he uh, just realized maybe a little bit too quick as he let the rope burn a little bit too short. Yeah. Definitely coming off the back of playing versus life coach earlier where he's like, I can do this rope in myself and uh, maybe not has quite the experience with it. Well, there is a lot of pressure on him for sure. This is a final, a big final for him and the local community is rooting for him. There's like a lot of people in the audience at the moment just uh, bringing the British power to support Ness. Yeah, as you said that, I literally heard a come on nest chant come yeah. out of the crowd. So yeah, I mean, perfect timing from random member of the crowd. Shout outs to you, buddy. A um, lot of local support from the UK. Just the car comes down, set, turns the armor up into the tank up form. So the survivability now is set for dog. So Ness knows that he's going to have to dominate this board. And what better way to dominate yep. the board than start slamming 6-6s six every single turn? Yeah, and I'm, I'm so glad as well, like, because this, this is Ness playing well, you know, and, and you know, maybe may being harsh here, but uh, one of his first games on stream just wasn't too great. And as a friend, I actually just went up to him and said, you need to just, like, relax. And just when you relax, you play so much better. And it seems that he's actually got that in this very, very important grand finals. All right, Raven, I, I saw that series that you're talking about and saying he played not that great is definitely not being too harsh, okay? <laughs> Maybe yeah. I didn't say those words to him, though. Right. Yeah, I'm a, okay. you know, PG stream. It's fine. You can, <laughs> you can take the kitty gloves off here. It's fine. We can go in on Ness. Nice. <laughs> He's going to find you after this final, guys. Yep. That is fine. <laughs> With his crowd of supporters. Yeah, okay, maybe, yeah. maybe that's what we've got to worry about. Yeah, that's a fair oh, hang point, on. Should we just stay up here? Like, if Doc, <laughs> if Doc wins, by the way, I hope he takes the, the, the back door. <laughs> just in case. Woof. <laughs> um, so... The Jaraxxus weapon can be used here to take out the Justicar Trueheart, but he's probably feels a bit safer using the minions here. There is that one-off threat of Grom. That's the one thing that yep. you have to be afraid of in this form. So he's going to hover around at 15 health with that taunt in the way, make sure he's nice and secure. And as long as he can survive for one turn, possibly two turns in this form, the power of the 6-6s six just start to carry the game away. Definitely. And he still has a lot of great cards in, in hand. It's not like he really needed the life top. And our defender of Argus comes to hand. Great card to buff those uh, those minions. But yeah, uh, I, I mean, for just for, sorry to uh, cut you off a bit there, Nimj, but even just look at this, he can play Bran, hero power, and still defend of Argus and just like not hit the 6-6, six, six, so it's not in DGH range. It does present a bit of a brawl board. But then once that board's gone down, you can then just go Dr. Boom, you know, hero power again. So he's just got such a good hand for this. It's going to be a real struggle, I think, for Dog to air uh, to keep this board clear as well as try and actually kill him. Would you consider, like, uh, Bran and Dr. Boom to have four bombs? Uh... I mean, damage. you skip a 6-6, six, six, though. That's the problem. I think you really do need to press that button every time. Like, a 6-6 six, six or two boom bots is really the consideration there. Like, boom bots are good, don't get me wrong, but I think I'd rather have a 6-6 six, six most of the time. All right. Uh, big Game Hunter coming down here, so he's even being greedy with his brawls here. Going to use a shield slam to take out one of these 6-6s, six, but even though he's preserving the brawl here, that shield slam was used on a hero power. So yep. every yeah. time that kind of exchange happens, that's just massively advantageous for the Warlock player here. But he does create a big tempo swing. He's making his one push here. This is the turn that says, okay, 
you know, Ness, if you've made the mistake here of playing Jaraxxus without the defensive options yeah. in hand, this is where I punish you. But, yeah. but, but luckily for see. Ness, he does have plenty of defensive options. Yeah, and you know what? Hero Power Shadow Flame seems pretty okay here. It's Just very clear good. out the board. It, Shadow Flame is super important because Shadow Flaming for six on demand is huge. Yep. But as you just said, uh, it's all that Dog's just not gone all in, but gone very aggressive with all of his minions. Uh, on that turn. So he just clears up very easy. He only takes one damage. And now he can just play Argus on the Boombots. Like, I wouldn't really mind Argus at all there. Maybe you want to wait for Bran. But I just think you always do want to just really just be careful about any What about just slamming first. Bran? Yeah, I was considering Bran here. I feel like that Defender of Argus maybe might be better saved for an emergency to make a wall of 6-6s six if you need it. You know, say if suddenly the Death Spike comes out and swings it, hits you in the face and sets off the Grom alarm bells, then you want to uh, set up a big defensive wall with big taunts. But he's going to go ahead and just take the initiative here. Um, he knows that brawls have yet to be used. He knows there's two in the deck, so he does need to find some way to get those brawls over and done with here. That's a pretty good card to bait okay. up with, yeah, yeah sure. I'm sure Thorison could be okay here. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And now this, uh, well, we can just bait out the brawls, and that's it. Like, Is he actually going to pass on the Thorison? I mean, I don't hate that. I yeah, I, I was actually just going to say, you know what? Yeah. This is a scary board in itself. If he brawls, great. If he doesn't, I'm doing another, what, 6, 8, 10, 12 damage? Yeah, I mean, right like, now, sure, like... Dog's hand basically consists of nothing except three board clears for a bunch of 6-6s. Six he has the two brawls that can do it, and then he also has double revenge when he gets low on life. Yeah, later. He can also clear a board of 6-6s. Six so, you know, from Ness's perspective, if he's cool sitting back here and just pressing hero power every turn until the end of the game, then that is enough to represent the pressure that he needs. Absolutely. And for Ness, even if, uh, if he sees a brawl, he's fine still. He has, uh, he has Morganis and he has the hero power. Exactly, and the thing is, if he sees Brawl, that's half of the mana that Dog has available. What's he going to do with five mana that actually threatens Ness in any way, uh, any real way? Like a Death Bite is probably the only card. If he Brawls, uh, a Taunt doesn't survive, and he Death Bite to face. That's the only thing that's going to worry, uh, worry Ness. I think Ness might be getting a little bit too concerned about Brawl value here. Like, I mean, sure, you know, you can afford to do this, but the byproduct of having infinite 6-6s six is that, you know, you don't need to worry too much about resources. I think Sylvanas Windrunner is potentially more worrying than a Death Lord here as an owl target. So I think that's probably a little bit too timid against a Brawl. We will see, of course, a Brawl come down right now. There's, like, there's no yeah. way that... Dog can try and take another turn here. I don't. He, he might wait one more turn for the double revenge. Oh wait, he'll yeah, just die. Exactly. On the other hand, I like the aggression as well. Just Ness uh, going for face. He has the Hellfire. Hero power is being free damage consistently. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that Death Lord, what a champ! Yeah, it actually survived. It will be able to deal damage, but then Ness has the heal bot. Double heal bot even. Yeah, he does, but maximum health of Jaraxxus form is 15 here, so if he's not able to put up a taunt in the way, 2 damage from Death Lord, 3 damage from the weapon, 10 damage from Enraged Grom, that adds up quite nicely to 15. You're actually right. Yep. And well, he could actually um, he could kill off the Death Lord this turn with Hellfire, mm -hmm. attacking, and then uh, heal bar. Uh, that would put him to 4. No, he'd hit it down to seven, Hellfire down to four, so that would only put him up to 12. So that's not a good heal job bot. either. Double heal <laughs> bot, sure. Sure, I mean, you know. Well, Grom is still lethal, right? Because you can easily activate Grom. Is second, have we seen the second bash? Uh, I believe that is the first bash. I may have missed a bash in the early stages of this game, but I think Yeah, I think it's the, the first one, one. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there isn't a realistic play this turn that plays around Gromash plus Enrage. Obviously, the, we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit because the Grom isn't actually in hand right now. Um, but um, the, the Bran Heal bot will restore him all the way to 15 here. But... This could be, I mean... But... Could yeah, this, game, this, game but. <laughs> this game is just game. This game is just game if the Grom is being drawn. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be honest, there's still no taunts for, for Ness. And... Uh, if Dog deals with this board and he has tools to deal with this board, Grom is still alive next turn, possibly. Right, and this is the concern, right? Because I don't believe there's some Fury Protector in the deck, and both of the Arguses were used somewhat liberally. I made the point where that happened, that he may need to protect himself yep. from Grom. How do you lose this game is a question you have to ask as a Hearthstone player when you get this far ahead. You know, what's the 1% that I lose to? And make sure that you keep something back that plays around that situation. Yeah, well, one of the benefits Ness does have is if he, uh, so regardless of what happens this turn to a certain extent, as long as he can kill off the Death Lord next turn somehow, which looks fairly realistic, he can actually just slam Malganis 
and say, well, okay, you won't necessarily be able to pull off a revenge Grom and kill the Malganis in the same turn. Oh, yes, he can. Oh, he has yeah. the coin. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. It would look That's so great, scary. But... Oh, Harrison wow. Harrison Jones. Got him. To draw into Grom as well. Yep. Revenge sweeps the board. Harrison Jones comes down. If there is a Grom Ash coming off this, then suddenly the game gets interesting because he does have that death fight as well now to reset up the lethal, but still no Grom in hand for Dog. Yeah, and uh, Dog is uh, already at 14, so what can Ness do? Only minions. So there is a Hellfire, but Hellfire doesn't do that much. No taunts. Do you start with Dark Peddler? Try to get PO on Sylvanas. I mean, Soulfire isn't a terrible idea off the Dark Peddler here either, so I don't mind the Peddler. I think we're probably yeah. ways pressing Hero Power unless he wants to play Malganis this turn, but having uh, not... I don't believe he's seen a single execute yet, so I don't think he has any hope. He can play Sylvanas and steal the Harrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably the play. Okay. I think... I think you kind of have to, right? Well, Harrison is quite deadly overall. Five damage. Well, the problem is you're just dead to Grom. You're dead to, you're dead Grom, to Grom, Grom if you, right. if you don't. Yeah, yeah. So I think he just has to play Sylvanas because, as you said, you, the turns like these are the turns where you say, "How? what's the loss? And this deep into the deck. Wait, now he's he... dead to Bash. Wait, what? Like, you'll be dead to second Bash, right? No, he's on 15. Uh, right. Yeah, oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's five Bash, Bash. Yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's yeah, no still bash, no though. Grom. Oh, this is... <laughs> that was a... I'm going to say Brave play. I, I, I mean, I'm actually okay with Brave. Not even, like, hedging my words here, yeah. like, doing the caster thing. Like, I think that is actually just Brave from, from Ness to just say, you know, he's just seen a Revenge used, so it's asking for Grom plus another activator. Yeah. One Shield Slam has been used as well, which is one of the other activators that can be used. So I feel like maybe making this one play here, this is the turn he perhaps has to do it, whereas if he waits, then maybe Death Spike gets developed. And then yeah, and then you're always the one step there. behind. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Like he wasn't in that great of a position suddenly, right? Even though he's getting those infernals, he is being threatened. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for I mean, dog, like, do, what do you do? Do you just uh, go face then brawl and belcher, or is there any better way to deal with this board? Yeah, so Bash is going to come down on the Emperor, which um, sacrifices some of Dog's burst damage here. So Bash Execute going to come down, Shield Slam on the 6-6, keeps him ahead on the board for now. But uh, Harrison Jones is going to get to continue to be aggressive here, set up the potential lethal of his own. Looks like he's considering Death Spite to the face as yep. well here. But he does choose to take out the minion. Obviously, that is a Peddler, so you have to respect the fact there is a Peddler card in your opponent's hand, which could very likely be power overwhelming. And this is so awkward for Ness. Uh, Second Zombie Chow doesn't do anything. He can st steal the 5-4, but no taunts, no way to deal enough damage. Uh, I mean, I think the steel play is solid here because this turn you actually, because you don't have to commit the Peddler Mana as well, you actually get to uh, Power Overwhelming, steal the minion, heal yourself back up, and yeah. still press Hero Power at the end. No, you don't. That's 11 mana. Yeah, I was going to say that's fine. No, no, yeah, no, no, no Hero Power, but still. Yeah. But you, you can get the heal bot off, which is right. the important part. You can go up yeah, to 15, yeah. which means... You get out of range, basically. Yeah, exactly. You're not just going to go straight up to a Grom Whirlwind effect. Plus the Death Spire. Oh, man, this is exciting. What's going to happen? Is there going to be the Grom, like... Ness has to think about this Grom. All I wonder time. how many cards are left in Dog's deck. Like, what exactly his odds are of drawing Gromash at any one time here? Well, even just looking at the, the image right, of small, the cards, right? it yeah. looks small. Whoa, okay. I mean, so after after this play, are we are we seriously considering that Ness just doesn't see the Sylvanas play? Uh, I mean, it's not. I mean, it's not like the world's greatest play or anything. It's a desperate play to reduce, yeah. remove the threat of that five four. So he might just feel like he's not desperate right now. I don't think we can necessarily put him on missing it. He um, did just see the execute as well. Malganis, right. Malganis doesn't look terrible as well. There's uh, even if there's an execute, there's only nine damage visible at the very moment. Yep. Uh, and if there is no execute, how do you deal with Malganis? If you brawl and Malganis survives. Yeah, I mean, if you brawl and Malganis survives, that's pretty much the end of the game right here. But. Um, the Revenge is an option to potentially do that. It looks like he's going to play his Acolyte of Pain here. Is that what that card is? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah Acolyte yeah. of Pain. So he is only going to get one draw off this because the Revenge will immediately kill it. But he's just really highly prioritizing digging through his deck and getting to that potential Gromash. Slam is another redraw as well. So he's just whittling down his deck here. He knows what his win condition is. Ness knows what his win condition is. Everyone knows what's happening here. It's just both players it's are just trying when it to set it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still impressed, though, because Ness was able to put enough threats to uh, just uh, get the removal out. 
and uh, oh my, cycle more. Yeah, cycle more. But the six three is still on board. It survived. And power of roaming presents some power as well. If Ness wants to push for final damage, there is still one more brawl for Dog, and he has some taunts. But if Ness uses the Hubot this turn, he should be out of range. And uh, Lothab, Lothab doesn't really counter brawl. No, Lothab doesn't counter brawl. Lothab also doesn't do too much to keep him alive. So he is going to need to heal bot this turn if he wants to play around the uh, the Gromash lethal. And he just saw Dog cycle, what, three cards that turn? Four cards that yeah. turn? Something along that line. So um, the he, he knows the Grom is getting close. And yeah. he can see the deck size. <laughs> he knows the odds of it being in his hand. Yeah, right the now. problem is, like, it's not as if he's thinking, oh, does he not play Grom in this deck? Yeah. You know, like, yes, yes, he does. I and think he knows that 100%. I think in a way, I kind of like Lothar because Lo when you play Hubot and Lothar and go face, you have uh, a big enough board to, I guess, uh, bait another Brawl. And if there is a Brawl, it's just a full turn from Dog. So you stay alive uh, out and out of range for the next turn because he will be at 15. And, and also, you know, it's very unlikely that whatever minion survives, Dog can afford to face tank. Yeah. As well. So if he does brawl, it's his whole turn. And he can't execute, for example, if the 6-3 survives and he can't face tank it. Is Grom literally the last card in the deck? Yep, I believe it is. Wow. <laughs> I think you summed it up really well then, Sol. You're a master of words. Yep. Wow, pretty I mean, much. What more can you it say? happens. It's very, very <laughs> rare that I do not have a hundred words to say and only one will do, but in this case, one does the job. Yeah, and I was nice. being deadly serious but with yeah, that coming yeah. as well. That's a fact. <laughs> the question, though, is can Dog set up lethal with Grom being the last card in the deck? That is indeed the question. Uh, it's it's a tricky one. I mean, that Death Spike being the second to last card does mean that there is more damage, so he has to. Find a way to get both of, the, like, more than one swing of the Death Spite to connect with face here overall and have that second Death Spite in place ready to swing to activate the Gromash. Yeah, so how much does actually re-equipping Death Spite go in face with it and then playing Belcher this turn do? I mean, it does plenty. Yeah. As I think, like, re-equipping re Death Spite and hitting face is the key part of this. That's what needs yeah. to happen. Because you do the four damage and then you do the next four damage on the following turn. That whirlwind effect is irrelevant. Yeah, no, not no one cares. Not what he was interested in. He just needs the damage right now. And how so much there's damage? eight damage plus another four, so there's 12. Uh, oh, plus, and Hellfire plus, plus three. Hellfire. Yes, yes 15. that's 15. So that is game. Wow. Literally <laughs> right in the nick of time because he was <laughs> yeah. dead next turn. Never I Grom. promise you that last card is Gromash. <laughs> it, it we had saw to be it Gromash. summoned from Death Lord in the game against Powder. We know it's in the deck. So yeah. that last card is Grom. He had no defensive options in hand, so he was dead that turn. Clutches out the lethal 1-0 to net. Yeah, a small part of me then actually had it just a flicker of worry that did Grom already be played? We just completely missed it, but I was like, no, no, it didn't. There was an execute being played, right? Mm -hmm. Execute and Death Spite, yes. Yep. Dog had no way to actually protect himself from set. Well, he could have not executed and played Belcher, which might have worked out better. Uh, I, I can't actually remember the math. He, he would, he would have no, still had a 6 no, he still dies. He still dies to that. Still dies. Oh, yeah, because he serves a low tip, right? Yep, yep, yep. yep, yep. Well, this shows wow. that the power overwhelming actually was the card to win the game. So not going for Sylvanas power overwhelming to steal the Harrison and actually having those aggressive play by Ness won him the matchup, even though he positioned himself really well in the very beginning. Defender Vargas, a bit wasted, but still was able to, uh, to push damage and Grum being the last card. Uh, yeah, I, I still think like may maybe he was just doing it for the excitement of the audience. Here, <laughs> but I think he made that game a little bit more tense than it needed to be by throwing away his defensive options yep. so liberally, but still able with enough with the Jaraxxus hero power to force himself through. And uh, Dog obviously agrees with your assessment, Raven, for this matchup. Likes his chances with Rogue picking it here into the, the weird Warlock deck. Here. Yeah, because as we saw from the last game, nothing like hyper aggressive really happens from this Warlock deck. And then Rogue, Rogue appreciates that. It's like, you know, give me time to gather my combo pieces, yeah. and then you just die. And also, the, I feel like, obviously, it depends how the matchup goes, but in general, you cannot play Jaraxxus against Rogue like you played it versus the Control Warrior. Right. Because they have the ability to just kill you from 15, yeah. uh, depending on hand size, of course, and especially when this is Malagos Rogue, which excels at late game burst. Yeah, what, right. what you can do, though, probably is, though, uh, play Morganis at the key moments to assert the, pres the board presence and protect yourself from uh, Maligus. Yeah, one of the scary things though about Malganis and the, the bigger drops in his hand is that cards like Sap, like he just plays the Malganis and the Rook two mana. 
gone. Forget about it. Now you're vulnerable again, and I'll just kill you. So um, this is going to be really interesting for Dog, as he started with uh, one of the more aggressive cards in the form of Sinister Strike, which really doesn't want to see that till much, much later. But he does have the Backstab SI7 Agent, which is going to be really good. Or oh, the second SI7 Agent, should I say. Which is going to be really good to just try and get that tempo and get that early damage in. Yeah, but Ness has to be a, a, the one who is aggressive, right? Because we said that late game actually favors Dog, so Ness will need to be able to, to rush. I'm not entirely sure. There is So there's double healbot, there's Belcher, there's Lotheb. There is a lot of survival mechanisms in this deck. And if he can, you know, just get on the board early, force out some damage to be used as removal, which then reduces the total possible damage with a Malagos. You know, there's, there's definitely a line where he can try and run the rogue out of damage here. I think that may work out for him as well. Yeah, which is why I think actually putting on some early pressure from Dog is important because yeah. you make Ness not just freely like, I'll play whatever I want every turn right. and you have to answer me. It's like, no. So the Warlock has to answer the Rogue Minions is what Dog will want to go for and then end the game with Maligos or just a combo with spells or something late game because, again, you still seems to strike on its own combined with, like, evis two Eviscerates. is still quite a lot of burst damage from hand for not a lot of mana. Right, this, this handful of spells right here is not what Dog really wants in this situation. Backstab SI is okay to answer the Imp Gang boss here with the dagger already pre-equipped to deal with one of the 1-1s, one but, you know, he really wants to be, like you said, establishing dominance on the board early so he can pressure um, pressure Ness out of the game early on and not just give him time to draw through his deck, pick up all those key survival pieces that he needs and create pressure of his own, quite honestly. Yeah. Yeah, Doc seems to be visibly upset about his hand, definitely just uh, needing free mana to cycle Fan of Knives. Fan of Knives. Is the bluff going to be called here? That's the question, because this is an emphatic bluff from Ness. No demons in hand, no respect given to the threat of the demon. Yeah, I think one of the issues there is he didn't have an answer to Malganis right. that turn. So why would you, you know, like you may as well just put that extra bit of damage on. And also looking at that, uh, that play from Ness, he uh, the very swift attack with a Void Caller, just ignoring the 3-3. Three, three. Again, just he's okay and hoping that he'll just dog a focus on the Belcher more than the Void Caller for now so that he can hurry up and try and tap into a demon. Yep, so Gadgetan picked up by Dog. No preparations, no coin, no backstab, none of the really exciting Auctioneer stuff to go with it right now. So this hand is a, a little bit slow for a Gadgetan uh, hand. He's picked up a couple of minions in the meantime with the Drake and the heal bot, and now Fan of Knives does cycle into a preparation. So he's starting to put together a hand with a bit more explosive potential here. Slowly but steadily, uh, as we mentioned in the, one of the previous matches, the, Hand of Rogue can look really bad, but then Gadgets and Auctioneer shows up, yep. and suddenly that actually works. Because the Sinister Strike is going to cycle, deal for damage to face, it might actually work. Still no demons for Ness, though. I'm loving this game of, like, three attack minion chicken, though. <laughs> it's just literally, like, so it's, Ness is never going to trade unless there's a demon on the board, I believe. Exactly, yeah. Because um, he's still at a safe enough health, and sitting on cards like Lotheb and Healbot feels pretty good against a Rogue. Uh, it's just whenever Dog decides to finally try and kill it, but the longer he waits, the more likely is that a demon does come into Ness's Yeah, hand. that's absolutely right. right. I think, I think, so I think this time we're going to end up seeing Tap, Dark Peddler, and Dark Bomb um, played in, in some sequence, um, mainly because it's a decent play to answer what's on the board, but also Ness will probably be considering the fact that Auctioneer can come down fairly soon, and also we're getting into Malagos territory as, pretty soon as well. And right now, his hand doesn't really have a great reaction to either of those. Yep. Lotheb is decent to buy him the one turn, but you know eventually he's going to have to deal with some sort of huge, massive, imposing threat from Dog, be it the Auctioneer or the Malagos, and his hand really isn't equipped to do that, right? Yeah, I agree, actually. I'm kind of surprised about the Lotheb this early, because Lotheb plays a similar uh, role in this matchup than it does against Freeze Mage. You can just say, like, no. <laughs> You're doing nothing on your next turn, or nothing too impactful anyway. And when, you know, you, the late game comes down after you've seen maybe Emperor, and it is going to be a 10-mana turn from the Rogue, you can just reduce that turn down greatly. And there I think is I Malganis. Can, so there's Malganis, so it will work with the Void Caller. But I think, like, overall, I can explain Lothar. He was able to just block a Gadget some turn and tries to put more pressure on board. Just trade. Pressure. Yeah, well, that seems like a turn. We uh, put, what? 32, 34 power worth of stats, well, 34 stats in total on the board for a total of seven mana. Seems good. That's pretty reasonable. We need to find a sap, boys. He does have a couple of draws for it, though. So he can um, he can go into prep. Has more than a couple. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. I wasn't actually going to count how many draws he has, but we'll see what he gets from the prep. That's going to be pretty important. Yeah, this is actually his last. And there is oh, He gets it. Okay. The, the pleasure, pleasure is mine. Mine. All right. 
Wow. I also love the fact that Dog did the emote, but his actual facial expression was just like just dead yeah, anyway. Yeah, face, like, right. Yeah. So that was the turn he needed. And there is the Malagos as well. No more spells, though. Yeah, and taking seven damage to face here as well. Defender of Argus, Dart Peddler, and Dart Bomb in hand for Ness. So if this Dart Peddler picks up some damage, he's he's starting to assemble a decent amount. There is the Heal Bot in hand for Dog to counteract that, though. Yeah, that's right. But uh, so what, what what does Ness have to do? do? Do you start with Dark Peddler to find the damage? Do you feel like this might be the moment to push? But on the other hand, you need to deal with Gadget and Auctioneer. You cannot just leave it be. And gets the three. Auctioneer goes down. So now he does not even have to use that Dart Bomb. He can hold onto it for more resources later on. Taps into the second heal bot. So starting to assemble that hand that I was talking about where he can try and outlast Dog as the, the rogue player with the burst combo. Not a great peddler overall here. Reliquary Seeker just a 1-1. One, one. Never really going to get a big enough board. Well, to that unless you, um, as long as you can play. Oh, okay, about the coil. I was going to say corruption for Maligos. You're, you will die. You will just die. With double heal bot in hand? Yes. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I think Carl was fine. Well, sure. You, you can consider corruption, obviously. Uh, we've seen JJ before play Maligos without doing much and uh, right. wanting to finish the game next turn. Yeah, very different circumstances overall. I think just leaving Malagos on, on board for, for one turn is going to be a death sentence because you won't be able to say double heal bot and then corruption. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Not being mana. You, yeah. you just won't be able to get enough healing and the corruption into the one turn. And now we have seven damage, 10 damage plus two, 12. Is this one damage off? Uh, seven, 10, 12 damage. Yeah, yeah. I, I count so, yeah. 12. You can, is there a PO? Not really. So boom bot hitting face for three or more. Yeah, because you peek. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no PO. There's no PO. Uh, yeah. But I mean, just attacking yeah, and trade. then yeah. hits face for three or more, and then you have lethal that way. That's extremely ambitious, though. It, I don't think Ness will feel significantly desperate about this game to want to have to make that play. He can just make a more solid, consistent play if he wants to, but he can also just tap for lethal here if he wants to. Well, actually, if you if you go for Defender Vargas, go face and play Hubot, you should be safe on 26 and a full, two taunts. And full board of minions? Yeah, I think the full board of the minions might be the issue there, though, because if he just go into a blade flurry after that, wipes the board, then he's got a lot of climbing back onto the board to do, is this Warlock doesn't really have a lot of burst from hand that doesn't require any minions. Right, and it does also involve just leaving an Azure Drake up yeah. on the board, which feels yeah. completely terrifying against Rogue, so... Yeah, right. I definitely respect this line. He's going to hope that he has enough time here. No, it looked like he was considering trading into the uh, the Tomb Pillager there as well. Decided against it. Going to pressure his opponent here. Puts him down to six life only. But Heelbot and Belcher both in hand as defensive options. Yeah, I do really like that play, though. The Tomb Pillager isn't too much of a threat at the moment. And leaving the Boombot alive is important because well, it's taunted. So the real kind of has to do something about it. And then you're going to get the bomb later anyway. Another Peddler. With Bran. With Bran. With Bran. It can provide a lot of interesting cards here. Something like a PO. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. Abusive Sergeant, of course, will get the double buff if it comes out here. Same with Elven Archer. Elven Archer will do two damage to a target. So There's also Defender of Argus. There's the there's Elven, Elven Archer. Archer. So Elven Archer does two damage here, which lets him trade a 3-3 three, three and the Archer battle cry very efficiently into a into oh. the Sludge Belcher. I think we live in the world where Elven Archer was just strictly better than Mortal Coil that turn, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's damage, and he won damage. You just seen few bots, so the Rogue normally doesn't have damage. Yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen more time thinking about that first right. pair, because I think if you actually looked back at the board, yeah, you can call the 5-1, or you can potentially just actually, kill your opponent. Actually, Coil's okay, because Defender of Argus in between the two two-attack minions here means he can get a value trade with the Argus into the Belcher and then use the Coil to finish it off. I guess this way works too. He's just going to take the clean 5-attack into it then use the Coil to get rid of the uh, of the, the, five one. the yeah. Tomb Pillager as well. So I think there's merit to Coil there based on the situation of the board. So what Dog needs to draw to be able to... To not uh, die next year. Blade Flurry. Yes. Yeah, that oh, card God. right there. Did oh, wow. And he can actually play it with Maligos. Did Eight. Ness actually pick the Abusive Sergeant over the Soulfire? The second? Pick? Yes, he yes, did. He did. Oh, okay. That was interesting. Wait, is it enough to just flurry this board? You don't need Maligos? Uh, yeah, Spell Power, Deadly Poison. That's a four damage flurry. Yeah. That's a complete ball clear. Yeah, that's actually better than just Maligos and Prime Flurry. Wow. Now we'll see what happens with the Boombots here. Two damage to the Violet Teacher, not a big deal whatsoever. Jaraxxus not going to get the job done. He will pro 
die immediately if he put plays Jaraxxus onto the board here. So that flurry was game winning. Without that flurry it. was huge, yeah. Yep. You asked the question, what does he need? <laughs> he just got and it. He, and Dog got answered it. you yep. this. <laughs> Bang. That was uh, so crazy. And actually, suddenly, is there a way for Ness to dig himself out of this? Hellfire and Shadow Flame are both still in the deck. That's very true, yeah. Um, and Big Game Hunter Shadow Flame is glorious here. So. Do you feel the need to actually tap them this turn? Yeah, yeah I, I, think feel, I feel like I it, really think you do, yeah. Hillbot might delay you a turn or two in terms of living, but it definitely doesn't win you the game. Well, if you just um, clean the board after your board got cleaned, uh, we have a reset on the game. Especially, yeah, Hellfire will be dealing free damage to face, which will be important here. Hellfire actually doesn't clear the board, right? No. No, the Drake's still there. Hellfire clears everything except the Drake, which you know might be good enough. It's probably better than the alternatives overall, but Shadow Flame is the money draw here for sure. Well, time flies, so Ness needs to make a move. He doesn't have time to tap and react to what he draws anymore, so he's kind of committed to the Malganis line here. No removal in hand for Dog, so it, this it is going to be have to dealt with, be dealt with honestly as of right now. Uh, the Blade Flurry does two damage to Malganis, doesn't really help too much. He can play the Blood Mage as well to ramp it up to three, which then means he can trade just using, say, the Heal Bot and the one of the one ones. Um, might be good enough. Well, I would not hate just trading it into Malganis with two minions. Yeah, do you like the trade? And would <laughs> it's a tough one, but I know you guys were saying earlier about the the, the uh, Maligos. But would you like playing Maligos, or would you try and go for Emperor? It depends how much dog knows about this deck he's yeah. if he's been keeping tracks on it he probably knows there's no siphon soul but there is an owl in the deck that can kind of ruin your malagos but i don't think there's like a clean hard removal answer to malagos in the deck but also the emperor here does just set up an incredibly yeah. explosive turn on the following yeah exactly i think that that's why that's better to play emperor because you will actually limit the cost of both sinister strike and flurry and yep. we'll be able to play both next turn yeah, yeah completely agree and it seems that's it. Uh, the 18th points. Mortal Coil we've seen in the past game or so. <laughs> yeah, like that's, all, that's all we've seen. It's going to go on to the Thalnos. I wonder whether it was worth actually keeping the Thalnos. Because he would have still been able to play it all next turn. But I guess he's thinking, you know, a second Sinister Strike uh, would have actually, you know, been obviously a lot better than the plus one spell power. Is it enough damage right now? It should uh, be, right? Enough. Nine damage from the Sinister Strike and seven from the Blade Flurry is um, a lot of damage. <laughs> plus Six five from max. board. 16 and plus the four, plus the one. Yeah, it should be exact lethal, I believe, actually. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> a really good map, Soul. Yeah, awesome. Count as we go. We did it. <laughs> the Maligus takes the game. And Dog survives. Wow, this is what a swingy game there. Yeah, that was a really, really exciting game to watch, actually. Back and forth, looked like the, the Warlock had the advantage for large parts of it, but that Blade Flurry timing was insane. Like, last possible turn he could need it, and I guess that's a revenge for the previous turn, where that was the last possible turn that Ness could get lethal in game one before he died, so. Definitely. Also, the second Flurry uh, did play the, the big role here, because, uh, and Dog immediately just went for lethal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knew. He's played that deck a bunch. He knows what's up. He doesn't need to count like a scrub like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doug is, uh, th that's uh, one another final for Doug, and he's been in many finals before. So he also played this deck a lot. Uh, this is like almost like a Team Liquid deck, right? Like mostly Nairia was playing this Maligos Rogue before. Yeah, Nairia's played a bunch of it. Um, I think Super JJ, just to big up my complexity teammate, was one of the first people to really have success with it. Achieved rank one legend, really blew up the deck. But that was a different list. There was no Sinister Strike in there. There was double heal bot, for example. So uh, this list is very much a Liquid creation, as far as I'm aware, and doing very well for those Liquid players. Yeah, and this next next match is going to be Ness's Druid, which is no surprise he's picked Druid uh, into this Rogue instead of his priest and uh, i think it's going to be the, the the benefit he has is that the, the maligos effect of the deck comes very late and if you give druid enough time it will draw ridiculous burst combos so that's the uh, that's the, what ness is going for this game whether that happens we'll have to see yeah that said actually ness's hand overall is quite bad and dog gods uh, coin backstab sa7 tomb pillager and uh well a good selection of five drops yeah, I mean, an excellent selection of five drops. And coming up for Dog on this next turn is the situation where he can pretty much just play a three mana 5 4 Tomb Pillager. Yep. You use the coin, you drop the 5 4, and then the coin comes back into your hand at a later date. So, pretty likely we'll see that come down. And now Ness has the decision to make whether he wants to continue playing from behind with the swipe or whether he just develops his Azure Drake. If he goes for Azure Drake, that's going to die quite fast at that backstab SA7. Right. Just give a Dog advantage that, that he needs. Tempo advantage, which Rogue can use 
excellent way. Yeah, it does feel horrible though when you just swipe the five four and it's like, oh, also friend, just take the coin back. Right, you know, like, I, it's really rough. I think swipe's okay here overall though because there, you know, there's a lot of three threes in the deck potentially, not as many as there used to be for rogues. Yeah. Generally, farseers have been removed, and you know, so yeah, there's potential heal bot, um, si seven agent, etc. So. You know, you swipe this turn, and then next turn for six mana, you can potentially have a swingier turn with Azir Drake and the Wrath. There's also a way uh, to Wrath, sorry, Living Roots. Yeah. Keeper and Living Roots to have a minion of your own and kill the, the Pillager, but uh, it doesn't feel great. It does not, no. And he does choose to go with the Drake option, so this is going to be punished very, very quickly by the Backstab it's SI it's agent, and this Tomb Pillager is going to start pounding away at Druid face right now. Yeah, and this is the issue with the Drake, is that... Rogue excels at just removal in general, and if he removed it and played a minion, you I mean, look, now he has to swipe Living Roots, which is going to work out clear on the board, but this is just like the, the backwards play, right? And just yeah. like playing from behind, because right. now the, the Rogue has his sort of free turn on more mana, which yep. is going right. to so be you know, a bigger you turn. You could have made that play interact the other way around, where Swipe comes down, kills the Tomb Pillager, then the SI7 agent comes down, and then Drake comes out with the Living Roots. Exactly. The, the yeah. same cards have exchanged with each other, but you're the one with the Drake on the board. Exactly, yeah. Well, Ness is still in an okay position. Uh, he has Dr. Boom, he has uh, then Lothar for the next turn, so he is fighting back. It's not like Doc already won, but uh, he definitely has a great situation. Picks up Gadget and Auctioneer, can, um, can sub Dr. Boom if he wants to, to buy some time. Do you, do you see anything else? I'm just wondering, can he uh, he can equip uh, Dagger, Blade, Flurry, and Ivis? Uh, well, he can just deadly hit it and Flurry. I mean, that would be a ball clear. Um, he can do it that way, but I mean, it, it's it's up to him. He might even consider just playing the Belcher to try and soften up the 7-7 the seven, seven, and then you get a bigger clear next turn. But then, say, if Lotheb comes down, you're suddenly terrified of Savage Roar as a follow-up on the following turn. So generally giving Druid a chance to say, hey, have one big minion and I'll deal with it next turn. Like, that normally <laughs> doesn't work out too well. Never works. Yeah, I was just weighing up the, the value of the health against Druid in right. terms of using the Avis over just the hit play for you. I think both are fine. It's just it always scares when you've instantly put yourself to nearly 20 health this early against Druid. I think it's fine, like, as, as long as you don't end up around, like, 16. Well, the, there's the boom bots as well, right? Which is yeah. the scary part on, on top of that. So it looks like he is going to go for the Avis by the looks of things and just be a, a, a sort of as safe as possible, I guess. Uh, I think he's actually going to hit it. Oh, he's going to leave the boot. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is this was also a play. Yep. I mean, so all three combinations of those of those work out pretty well. Innovate's not a bad draw here because he can immediately go into the um, Lotheb, and Lotheb and Shredder in the same turn here to load up on power. But uh, the Lotheb effect will make Blade Flurry exactly seven mana right here, so it is still castable under these conditions. So Ness is going to have to consider how he wants to time this Lotheb, what he wants to do, wants it to do over the course of this match, because when playing against Rogue, much like playing against Freeze Mage, timing your Lotheb is the most important thing in the matchup. Yeah, and I also think this is why you attack with the Boom Bots. It's like, let's do what these guys do first, because now the spell power's off the board. So now the Blade Flurry uh, uh, won't do as much damage. Obviously, it wouldn't have cleared off the Lotheb anyway. Um, but still, you know, it's something you have to bear in mind if, depending on what your follow-up play is going to be. Yeah, and I think now in this situation, Shredder Lotheb is just pretty solid overall yeah. because, you know, one spell coming down here, even if it is Blade Flurry, what does it do? It pops open a Shredder. Big deal, right? All right, so he goes for it. Innervate Lotheb, a really good board, and it also locks the gadgets in turn. Nice. There's Belcher, at least for Dog, so he can still has to play. Yeah, what Dog has to be seriously worried about now is next turn, Ness is on nine mana. And he's just set up two two minions that are very sticky because of this low theb, and he could just straight up die if he doesn't really prepare for the potential combo. We can see he only has Ness only has the savage draw, but he's just forced into the belt here as any way to survive. Isn't he like one damage off even with the combo? Well, he does have four, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. That is pretty close itself there. Silencing the Belcher, Savage Roar plus Living Roots nearly does the job as well. Not quite there at this point, but the damage is ramping up right now. Liquid Dog does still have that heal bot in hand that he can use for protection, but damn. Do you, do you think there's any merit to actually using the Savage Roar this turn? I think to just cash in on the damage? Because the problem is, and you know your opponent plays heal bot, which is the, the fear, of course, but also you might not draw Force of Nature for a while, and because Rogue could just flurry this board down, you might not have Savage Roar targets uh, afterwards. So. Yeah, so I think there's definitely merit to going for Savage Roar as well. And uh, are you threatened yourself? There's the, the Dagger, which is buffed, and the 3-5 Lothab is going to stay there even after the silence. 
So I might actually consider... Well, not Lothal, but Belcher. You might consider killing the Belcher. Um, I mean, it, it's a scarier situation to be in against, say, an Oil Rogue, where yes. they can really leverage a minion on the board, but I don't think you're too worried about big Malagos shenanigans coming down just yet, so I think you can afford to just be as aggressive as possible here. Yeah, I think I would like to see Savager being played, even though you lose, let's say, two attack from one minion. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I would have been okay with it. It would have pushed six extra damage that turn, so the rogue would be at four. It means that even in uh, the heal bot world, they still have an achievable life total for bursting the rogue down, so uh, I don't mind it. Snow chugger. So probably it would work a bit better if you actually attack into the shredder. Wow, windmill slam, Ancient of Law. Boom, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it's a one big Ancient of Law. Yeah, and the two draws we will find out very shortly. Looks like one was Ra. As I'm pretty sure he did cast it then on the 3 3. And then uh, follow up with Living Roots. Yeah, yeah, because he cast it for the draw. And uh, Living Roots, I guess, onto 3 3. And we'll just see. I mean, good luck <laughs> trying to cast a Gadgetan Auctioneer turn while the spectator mode is bugged. But he's picked up. Things are uh, happening. He's, I'm going to say. Oh, Fan of the, Knives. He's picked up Fan of Knives, yeah, which is. Uh, it definitely cool. can answer the trends. Mm -hmm. And then so, if he yeah. gets, um, can he get preparation? If he gets preparation, he'll be able to finish off the Ancient of War. Yeah, so Dog has four mana right now. His hand is Fan of Knives, Eviscerate, Double Sap, and there is a 5-5 five, five and two one ones on the board is the state of the game. Uh, the Spectator mode is bugged out. Hopefully we can get that fixed for you as soon as possible, but we will do radio casting until then, I guess. Okay, so uh, what do you do as Dog? Fan of Knives, Eviscerate, still playable. Yeah, the Fan of Knives Eviscerate seems pretty good here, purely, be there we go, <laughs> purely because it just hey. plays up the board and it removes the threat of the combo, killing you. Because on 18, on an empty board, you see you're pretty good. Oh, he didn't have the mana for Evis. Yeah, he, he doesn't have mana for Evis, so the 5-4 Ancient of Lore is still there, and Savage Roar remaining in hand of, uh, of Ness. Picks up the Druid of the Claw as well, so that is 9 plus 6 16. plus 1, 16 damage this turn. So yeah, he's very close yet again, but since he does not have lethal, he's almost obligated to respect that Gadgetan Auctioneer this turn. Definitely. This is again, this game coming down completely to the wire here, so close from both sides. And you have to remember that if Savage Roar would be cast before, he would probably have enough to finish the game with that Druid of the Claw. He would leave Rogue at four. Right, but the heal bot came down. Yeah, there was. So he'll be back up at 12 at this point. Yeah, this is definitely a rough one. Um, the only benefit here is I wouldn't even mind seeing uh, Azure Drake to see what he, uh, what he draws. And then maybe even just BGH this turn because he's just seen multiple AoEs. He saw the Fan of Knives. He's seen a flurry. And what are you bgh in this deck? You know, the, the Maligos is obviously too low yep, to BGH. Yeah, yeah. So get the minion on the board and hope, you know, hope it at least causes a frustration for Dog and he has to answer it. Speaking of frustration for Dog, we saw a little wry hand gesture there from Dog as he drew the preparation. The exact turn his Gadgetan Auctioneer was killed. Didn't get the chance to cycle through his deck with it anymore or use it to cast that Eviscerate that would, that would have resulted in the ball clear on the previous It's turn. still not a bad situation for Dog because he's at 18 and has minions. Yep. Which is great overall. Well, he doesn't have any spells that will help him to deal damage, but having the minions being outside of the combo range, Ness will just have to play his own minions to be able to fight for board, but this gives Doc an advantage. All right, guys, I have a question. How do you win this game? As Ness? As Ness, yeah. Uh, you go four damage to face. I mean, that's the root of my question, right? Yeah. Is that the only way you win this game from this position? How much damage is there? Seven? So if you so are we on it, Drew, Drew the Claw, Charge, and Shredder? Th this is my question, yeah. guys. So, okay, so that's what I'm thinking. Right. Um, but we have extra knowledge, right? We can see Dog's Hand and know that's still relatively safe at this point. You've seen but Belcher from Dog. You've seen a Q-Bob from Dog. All right, Ness chooses to go with the Taunt option here. So he is going to continue to fight for the board here, but... I think when the rogue has this much of a consolidated advantage, you can pretty much expect to just get your board dealt with over and over again. We see second Saffinham, we see Emperor, we see Violet Teacher. Um, you know, like, what hand do you put your opponent on at this point that can't deal with you just playing slightly clunky druid minions? Yeah, over especially and over again with spell power time. on the board as well, makes it always right. that much easier. The only thing here to just to remember is Ness did just see a sap yeah. as well. So he's like, 
if he doesn't have the second stat, he has to put more resources into the minions. Sure. But, but, but I do agree that, you know, with spell power, two minions on the board for Rogue, you're feeling pretty rough about this as the, the Druid of the Claw is going to get sapped. And does he just, well, I suppose he can't really ignore the Shredder here. Yeah, he has to trade with the Shredder. Oh. Takes it out nice and efficiently. He doesn't necessarily have to respect that because that is not lethal. With uh, with the combo this turn. Uh, what about living roots? There's living roots on top of. Yeah, I, I, think I believe both living roots have gone. Yeah, and I think the yeah. thing here is, if he attacks with the Azure Drake and these minions aren't cleared up next turn, he has lethal. Yeah, I think with the dagger next turn. Have we seen double innervate as well? Uh, not sure on the innervate, innervate front. Yeah, spicy things. Can yeah. Speaking happen. of which, there is an innovate in fact, but the that combo is not in hand for Ness right now. <laughs> yeah, still missing that force of nature. So the play on the previous turn that I was asking you guys about, Druid of the Claw face to set up the top deck force of nature. It was definitely an out um, that he could have chosen to set up. Ness obviously felt like he could still keep competing for the board there. Doesn't look like it's going to work out that way. He can still fight. He can heal himself. I think he has to. And I, innovate the tool. Yeah, yeah. I think he yeah. has to heal. And I think that's actually just the only play he can do because even Savage Raw with that one attack minion does not do enough to any of these minions Oof. on the board without face tanking them. And that's just asking for trouble. Yeah, then just, just die next turn. So Definitely. Uh, yeah, he's going to go for the heal. And for Dog, it's also a weird situation because suddenly minions. And it's okay. Uh, he has a three mana Violet Teacher. With nothing to generate tokens. Yeah, with. but you, but will you have know to what? Start An additional trading. minion's pretty good. You will have to start trading if you don't have the kill. You got <laughs> to... Oh. <laughs> well, I guess you are getting a coin. That's something. Yep. Here we go. It's pretty good, right? You just you got gadgets and you just get a free coin. That's awesome. Like, yep. Uh, backstab. Awesome. This is this oh is God. how you play Miracle <laughs> Road, guys. This is where Ness is like, please stop. So please, you draw another please. card with backstab. What do you backstab, though? Do you backstab the 1-2 or 5-5? Five, five? Uh, you backstab the 5-5. Five, five. It gives you fan. I think there's a fan left and second flurry as well. They're both out. SI7 agent as well. That works. Sure. Yeah, that's a good card. Yep. Wow. I like it. But then you need to kill the board, I believe, right? Hmm? You, you need to kill everything? Uh, or do now you, against, you do, yes, because yeah. now that 1-2 represents yeah, lethal. Yeah. Yeah, so if he kills the 4 1, he needs to trade into the 5 2 with the 4 4. Could he not have killed, just traded the Emperor into the uh, Druid of the Claw and used the SI on the 5 2? Uh, yes, yes, he could. Yes, possibly. Yes. He's just definitely stressed. He's thinking about the combo as well. Just because he's a minion down now and the health on the Emperor being 1 or, five, uh, one or 4 doesn't really make too much difference at this point Ooh. in the match. The, the fun fact is, yeah, All right. this, this can actually. There is a win off. condition right there. That's a win condition, and Dog actually doesn't have it to finish the game next turn. He again needs to draw into something, and he still has little cards that do nothing, like just minions. And there are two Force of Natures left in Ness's deck, right? We yep. haven't seen one being used this game. So, you know, basically any spell is probably going to be lethal here. Because even if it doesn't do the damage it's itself, chain. it's going to open up the chain draw. So he's going to have to find a way out oh, here. That's a spell. Preparation. Oh, my God. That's a spell. So what can Dog he actually do? into Maligos. If he gets Maligos. in it now. So sad. 13 damage in play right now. 12 from the minions, one from the dagger. So he needs three damage. Belcher, Shiv, maybe second Shiv Belcher? will not do it, but Shiv will continue oh, to redraw. Sinister Strike is three damage. Wow, and he's still cutting his own cards here. <laughs> but it's <broken. laughs> He can now shit. Oh my god. That was Shiv, Shiv as well. <laughs> yep, so that's a miracle rogue for you. Yeah, just Shiv him. Come on. Oh, well, oh please stop. <laughs> we want to see the Shiv. All right, so Dog wins this very important game, and it's almost like the match game because the only deck remaining for Ness is a Priest, and Priest versus Rogue is horrible. Yeah, we did see him win the matchup, but it was in no small part to Harrison Jones hitting on a uh, two-charge Tinker's Oil yeah. weapon. There's no such thing in this deck. This is not as weapon-a-reliant deck as Rogue usually is, much more spell-focused. Um, Deadly Poison is in there, Blade Flurry is in there, but not that Tinker's Oil. So the Harrison Jones is not going to have as big of an impact. And generally, this is a point you made before about the Warlock deck. If you give Rogue time, yep. they win pretty much every matchup. So Priest, not the best deck in the world at rushing people down. It's going to be an uphill struggle here for Ness, and his run may just be coming to an end here in the Grand Finals. Yeah, all, all I'm really hoping for, though, is just more games to this extent, because <laughs> every single game has been intense, and uh, really enjoying these matches. And uh, we are going to see the Last Hope Priest going here, and the opening hand, two Cabal Shadow Priests probably don't want to keep hold of them. But the, uh, the Valens Chosen can definitely get some work done early on. 
Um, maybe not on the Wild Pyro specifically, but very difficult uh, buff for a rogue to deal with. If, if they're sapping like a cleric that's been phones chosen, you're like, sure, I'm happy with that. And if they're not, it requires, you know, a, so much more damage and resources uh, to deal with that singular minion. I think the biggest question here is like, what is Ness really looking for and what's the strategy to win this, this match? Is, uh, is he uh, going to go aggressive and try to kill rogue before uh, Rogue gets all the tools because, as, as you said, so like if you give Rogue enough time, Rogue is going to win. Especially as a priest deck where you don't have really like an end game. But uh, this deck has a lot of bursts as well with Hawkeye Soul Priest and Flash Heal. So maybe that's the way. Just play those small minions, deal damage finish him off with flash kills. I completely agree. And a great way to start doing that, as I think you were just about to point out, Raven, is one drop into Coin Velen's yep. Chosen. That this is, is exactly the, the thing that can cause so many issues for the Rogue, unless he has a perfect answer, which I actually don't think there is one for turn two. Is there an answer well, you can have? Off, fine. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, but I mean, like, if you can't deal with the, um, deal with the Cleric initially, then it, the Velen's is going to come down and at least then cause him to respond to it. He can't just straight up kill the... Uh, Kill the cleric. I guess if he draws into deadly poison, it's the only uh, easy way here. Uh, so he didn't go for the cleric. Was that because of a possible backstab weapon attack? Yeah, I mean backstab is a concern for sure. Maybe just valuing his North Norsha cleric highly, but he could also try and play two one drops this turn to double the chances that he gets a Velen's target on the previous turn. But he may be going full greed mode and trying to get that Velen's onto the acolyte of pain for maximum value overall. Here. I think one of the so the the way a priest normally can win quite easily is. Uh, getting so much cycle that they have all of these weird like combo pieces for the answers to the board. The only problem is uh, that takes time and also you can't really answer a board if it's Maligos kill you turn. So it's going to be a little bit rough. Definitely. I, I mean, one thing is uh, working for Nas. He got the coin. So even though he might not be super happy about the coin himself, the important part is Doc didn't get that coin. Yeah, I feel this is too slow though. I think I don't think he really has too much time to actually, you know, not not really try and get this cleric down. I mean, the, the I think the time has passed now anyway to try and just drop it as a minion. He really needs to now play it. Maybe play it now and heal, but now it starts to feel too slow when he's got a Velens in hand. Yeah, and I mean, just just playing the single one drop there. I mean, I. I wonder if Ness is looking at this game differently from I than I am. Maybe he feel, feels more comfortable going in a long game with Priest. But from my perspective, with one drop, coin, and Velen's chosen in my hand, I'm going to recognize and say, OK, this is my chance. You know, I'm not a well-equipped aggro deck, but this is one of the draws that I have that can potentially do a lot of damage early. Then if Orkanai comes out of my deck at the right time, I can really put it together. So, well, And also as well, because that minion was Cleric, the rogue either answers it, or you can kill the three drops and heal and continue to cycle. So you really just demand an instant answer from the rogue, or you're already ahead. And that's what you, I agree. That's what you need as the priest in this matchup. Well, Ness is actually choosing a different line of play, so he's probably going for the long game, and uh, he'll be trying to outheal Maligos Rogue. It's impossible, though. That's the, that's the problem. Like even with flash heals, like Maligos isn't going to come down until the turn dog is killing him. Did you and guys that's why they form Ness? To respond, that's impossible. Respond to it. So there's, the, I mean, <laughs> there's no. a key point, right? If if the priest can actually pressure the rogue to force them to use blade flurries and eviscerates and things like that on minions, yeah. then suddenly there cannot be enough stuff in general left for the Malagos to, to activate a one-turn kill. Problem is, this build of priest is really, really removal and fatigue based. There's no injured blade masters in the deck, for example, which is one of the big threats you can put on the board against a rogue. So he's going to have a really hard time pressuring the rogue enough to see those cards get used and reduce the total number of damage possible with Malagos. Yeah, but he's going to get the bones chosen on the Chow there and get a, a pretty decent trade versus the Tomb Pillar journey. Can actually, uh, I think he's initially hovering over that coin there just to coin heal, and I don't really mind that. Um, he has gone for the circle for the bigger heal, so it's less uh, open to eviscerate. Straight into an Alcanized Soul Priest, but the only thing that worries me about the circle is that he actually, you know, we saw from the previous turns where the Rogue actually built up a pretty big board with this deck, and Alcanized Circle, for example, is a really good way to clear it up. Also, he has Wild Pyromancer and the coin in his hand. Like, Circle of Healing could just draw him, like, a million cards, cards <laughs> yeah. at some point in this game. Ugh. So basically what Ness is doing, he's not trying to win this game. That's what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's, he's, he's having a good attempt at throwing I, this game really hard. I, I think it's... I mean, I'm not 100% here, but it feels like if, if we cut off the top half of the screen, Ness is playing a good Priest game, right? But against yeah, right. this, yeah, against this I deck, I don't think 
these these plays are the plays that are going to win him the game. These are good. If, like I said, these are good priest plays. This board is good, and the draws are good. But versus Zoo. Yeah, versus almost any other deck actually. But this Maligos Rogue, I think, has can just go okay. Just you know, poke at me a little bit. Do you, you sort of you fancy tricks early on? But then I will just sit and just kill you later on. Yeah. Uh, so Deadly Poison Eviscerate going to come down here, deal with the Zombie Chow problem, uh, gets the five healing back from it. So comfortable now, back at 28 life with just a 1-3 on board. Power Shield, a decent pickup to cycle through the deck a little bit, but looks like he is just going to load up on dudes here, perhaps use the coin to start cycling cards. And yeah, he's obviously very, very focused on digging through his decks for particular things. Maybe trying to pick up that Harrison Jones, other options that he has in there just a car to make sure he has the long-term stability as well as now potentially assembling an Orcanai combo in his hand with the flash heels so at this point i can really understand the hard card draw play because he's he's starting to see a thing line up in his hand right he has that Orcanai, yeah. so he has he has a game plan to work towards now that flash heel does a great job as well definitely but the on the other hand that's why i, I like to stick off healing as well because zombie chow is potentially five damage if you look at it and uh, maybe even getting Justicar and trying to change your hero power to deal four damage every turn and we have an Okanai. Double Okanai at least uh, will ensure that you can use it twice when Okanai is being dealt with. Yeah, this is a really awkward turn though. There's no easy way to actually kill off this 3-3, so I think he might actually just have to go for like the Death Lord in some respect, or maybe just throw away an out not throw away, but play an Alcanai and uh, the hero power and just say, you either sap this, kill it without without the using the minion, or the SI7 agent dies, in which you're probably okay because you have a second Alcanai. Does it look like he's leaning towards the Death Lord play, though? Yeah, yeah, Death Lord makes sense. Um, if there is no sap, it's a lot of damage that needs to be put into that Death Lord. And uh, <laughs> what if Death Lord brings Maligas? Oh, oh boy, God, there's, there's no Entomb in hand right now either, so that could be completely that devastating right now. Okay, guys. You had it's to jump happening. Him, but I'm afraid it's, it's gonna happen. happening. Commentators. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Commentators, never mind. Yeah. Belch is still a good draw, though. You know, like just get the minions yeah, straight on there. You know, right. there's not a lot that priests can do with no board against the Belcher. Yeah, and this is the problem. Like the priest deck now finds itself behind on tempo. Light bomb's decent, but doesn't address the Belcher. Holy Nova's decent, but doesn't really address the board entirely either. So. He's in an awkward spot. Pyromancer Holy Nova will clear out the 3-1 and the 3-3, but again, the Belcher is sat around. So hard for the Priest to, to seize back the tempo from this point. And if he's never able to get back the tempo, he's never able to build up his life total to a comfortable point where he's outside the eventual birth well, I range. I think Pyromancer Holy Nova actually is quite good in a way that uh, you will damage Belcher and prepare it for Live Bomb next turn if sure. Rogue wants to fall up with minions. And Rogue definitely needs minions at some point on board to be able to push with damage. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that as a two-turn plan, but from Dog's side, he's okay with that with the Violet Teacher in his hand. Violet Teacher, a very light bomb resistant minion. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see the game go down that path. It does seem like Ness's best um, option out of a bunch of imperfect answers, right? So. Yeah, because even like, uh, so Pyro Nova does the same thing as Light Bomb here. Um, except it's it just feels the curve better, and also Light Bomb can do more later. So uh, you know if he's going to try and do the AOE game, this is the playmates because he can also just Soul Priest Hero Power onto the Belcher next turn if he feels he needs to to uh, clear at least the first half off the board. Interesting choosing to use the Shiv here. Shiv is one of your potential uses of damage from for, for Malagos. Um, your Shivs, your Eviscerates, your Sinister Strike, and the Blade Flurries are your big sources of burst damage from for Malagos and. One Eviscerate has already been used to deal with the Zombie Chow, and now the Shiv is down as well. So the amount of total damage is being slowly reduced from the Rogue deck. Yeah, I think the reason for the Shiv there as well was is that he's not even close to Maligos, and he's not close to any other card draw. He yep. has no Gadget Zan, you know, no no fan of Knives at the moment. So you may as well just use it and try and just cycle into the bigger impact cards of, of the deck. And there goes the Flash Heal Death plan. Using the Flash Heal as the removal card, so Ness is just fighting board for board. Do you guys like it? Uh, I mean, if he leaves that Violet Teacher around for too long, the game's just going to snowball out of control. So I think it makes a lot of sense to deal with it. It's a shame that his only way to deal with it was the Flash Heal, but I think it was just kind of a necessity in that situation. Dog is back to one of those hands, Nymch, where it's 
Oh, my hand sucks. Never mind. So bad. Don't yeah, sand. <laughs> Everything's fine. Well, actually, if there is no Gadget Sun, if Gadget Suns are the last cards in the deck, that hand might still remain really bad, and this can open a window of opportunity for Ness to be able to come back into this game. I was just waiting for the Gadget Sun to go in the hand. <laughs> <laughs> After that speaker. comment, it just appears straight in the hand. Wow. Well, that was a very, very exciting set of turns. Uh, 10 mana pass from Priest, followed by attack, 10 mana pass from Rogue. Well, it, so what's the reason for Dog not daggering up there? Because he has deadly poison. Ah, okay, I missed the deadly poison. It's a pretty solid up. reason. That's it, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll let him up. I'll let him up. I actually looked away for one second and just completely missed the deadly poison, so I apologize for that one. So that's yeah, a pretty worries. good reason. All right, Justicar is a um, pretty solid line here. Um, it enables him to now get that survivability plan going as well as generating a big minion on the board. Does just trade with the heal bot, but at least now that repetitive source of three damage is yep. taken off the board. And Dog cannot catch a break right now. He's waiting. just drawing whiff after whiff after whiff, and we are just waiting for a certain six mana 4-4 four four to appear out of his deck. Yep. If he gets Maligos, Maligos deals a lot of damage, but it's still not the card. Yeah, not even close. I mean, like, it's it's still fine in a way because he can backstab the 4-5 if it shows up and uh, he has some damage on board, but at least he would be able to do something. Yeah, this turn's really interesting, actually. Like, he, he chose to hero power, and now he sort of looked like he's just got to slam Cabal, which is fine. Yep. You know, there's not a lot of targets. But I was surprised that he didn't actually just go for Cabal and, like, the Velen's chosen on the Acolyte. If he wants to buff it up like he has with the Power Word Shield, to gain more card draw, then why not Velens and just try and <laughs> put the threats on the board? But as you guys just laughed, as yet another spell. Uh, What's scary is, I just look at dog. Even ex they're not a lot of expensive spells in Rogue, but I would just imagine the gadgets and turn. He could just draw the whole deck. Yeah, but uh, even if he gets that Maligos, I think Maligos would be fine uh, because now with the with the flurry, he will be able to just clear the board and position himself quite well. But yeah, that's the is, as soon as you commit Malagos without winning the game against Priest, they can just entomb it, and that quite yeah. quite well could be the end of the game because you just slowly wail away into. <laughs> I'm the loving this as well. Please give Backstabs me the gadget. Backstabs his own <laughs> blood mage Thalmos. What a god! Thank Got you. two pillars. A minion. Yes. Oh, not the one he yes. wanted, but a minion. Right. He's like, oh hey, I can play this and get a coin in my hand. <laughs> Just what I always wanted. He now has two coins. That should be a good Shadow War death target, right? There's nothing else you want to... Nope, this is the best death yeah. target in the deck for, for Control Priest, for sure, so... Um, just ma bash away with the minions, Shadow War death, the uh, the Tomb Pillager, go from there, it seems solid. So how do you not overextend, or is it Shadow War death and Valence? Oh, you overextend. Like, just overextend and try to like be as aggressive as possible. Yeah, I think so. I think when whenever you're in a position where like Malagos Blade Flurry isn't game ending, like I think you're fine going in because you know they're not gonna do it because they have to respect your in two. Yeah, and I think what's really good about this as well is he can sort of overextend but not really with the Valence chosen. It's not like he has to play the Soul Priest and then go face with Hero Power. Right. He could do that, but with the with the uh, poison already on the weapon and a threat of a Blade Flurry, it's not worth. Whereas this doesn't increase the minion size and actually makes it less vulnerable to Blade Flurry while still pushing for additional damage. What are you actually waiting to Shadow with there? I don't know. His own minion, maybe? I don't why, know. why not set up Lethal, to turn Lethal as well? It's, like, it's a good question. It's <laughs> a very good question. All right, so guys, he, even though uh, he is in a, this is weird, but uh, I'm just checking. What is the matchup, Tempo Mage versus this Priest? Tempo Mage versus Priest, uh, I personally think is Priest favored against a fast Tempo Mage list, but Dog's list is a slow Tempo Mage list, which <laughs> can do uh, a little bit better against Priest overall. And this draw from Dog is uh, pretty much appalling. Like, can this man catch a break? Yeah, actually, Won't someone give Dog a bone right he now? Can, he, can <laughs> kill, he can kill Death Lord and get Gadgets on. That's true. <laughs> All right. Let's Rewind. Do that. Let's do exactly that, Nymph. And uh, especially with just like one eviscerate, it's fine. We have to evis and then do you blade flurry? Or do you attack? I mean, That's the scary part, isn't how, it? How desperate are you, right? Like, how much damage is in play? 9, 10, 11, 13 damage in play overall. So he's just going to sap the Elise here. Second map? What? Yeah. This is just getting ridiculous, though. How much damage is there? 3 plus uh, 4, 8, 12. 12. Damage. Yep. Dog is, like, thinking, this is, is this my life now? Like, are, are, you, are you guys serious? Grand finals of a tournament, and I'm I'm losing Rogue versus Control Priest. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 
Seems pretty standard. There's map right? one. Does he just slam a lease just to have a chance at that other map? Oh! oh the monkey! Well... Is it monkey time, guys? I don't think it's monkey time. Like, looking at the Okanai Soul Priest and the hero power, I think it's definitely not the monkey time. The second you play that monkey, your opponent can Malagos prep Blade Flurry you yeah. and knows that their Malagos is safe and they win the game. So, yeah. Like, Ness doesn't know what's going on in Dog's hand right now. <sighs> Ness might be thinking there's Malagos waiting to build up critical yeah, massive so much burn, damage. Yeah. 30 damage. And as soon as he transforms all these cards in his hand, which Dog will be giving one of those cards credit for being in Tomb, so as soon as he plays the monkey here, Malagos Prep Flurry would come out and just win the game for Dog. In the world where there were any cards in Dog's hand that did anything at all. In a world where there is justice. <laughs> in a world without hope. And that's not Gadgets and Still. He could still coin out Gadgets and if he tries. Is it not too late? I, I think like you just need to go for Gadgets and Possibility from your deck. Like, if there is a... Pretty good chance to get that gadget side <laughs> if you kill the Death Lord now. The, that yeah, or, I mean, he's or going for it. <laughs> He's going for it. There can't be many more minions This dagger is going in, and he's oh, just... Uh, here we go. He shook his head, so I do not think... There it is! Oh! Oh, you get it. All right. He wanted Malagos, though, didn't he, at this point? He, well, he probably wants Malagos at this point, yeah. But Auctioneer can at least potentially start to make something happen here. Two coins. Well, he needs to start moving fast because the rope is going to show up in just a moment. There's, There's the Mali. Spot. I definitely wanted to see Sap on Elise again. Yeah, he's going to sap the Cabal this time. And there we go. Emperor and Malagos immediately come into the hand off that Gadgetan Auctioneer. Does he have enough damage, though? Like, did Ness actually out heal this game? Oh, that's lethal. Ah, oh, yep. That's it. That's it. Wow. <laughs> Flash heal and the hero power. Ness takes this impossible match. What? Well, game. And uh, we end up with Mage versus Priest. Yeah. That that's game <laughs> ridiculous. It was... What? <laughs> I just, Ness I has the ability to win this matchup by forcing his opponent to draw badly. I don't know how he does it, but it happens. How many spells, legitimately, how many spells was that in a row? I think it was row? like six or Before like the first Drake came out, because he got two Drakes back to back at yeah. the end. I think before that, yeah, like five or six, six Five or six, six yeah. In a row. So I, I think, Doc, how many cards Doc had still in the deck? Like three, which was Gadgets and Auction I think there was a second Tomb Pillager as well. No, second. I think he drew into the second Tomb Pillager. I think it was like Sinister. He coined strike. out the first Tomb Pillager. On oh, sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like second so long ago now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> second Strike, but he's playing double Sinister Strike, right? I think there's only one in the list. Might actually. be one, okay. I think there's only one. Um, not entirely sure, but yeah, I think second Auctioneer was one of them, and then, you know, who knows. So Dog had a situation where Gromash was the last card. Yeah. And Ness won that game because of that. And then again, Gadgets and Auctioneer in the last, like two, both of them, in the last four cards. Definitely been some tense games and some extremely close games. And these two players must be mentally exhausted at this point after this, these four games going either way, always going down to the, the last, just the very, very back end of each game, the back end of each deck as well. But it is going to be dogs tempo mage and we saw a pretty crazy game earlier with this deck so anything yeah. is possible here from both uh, players it's we've gonna be crazy we've seen that before dog going versus this contra warrior with uh, where his chances were slim and he still was able to turn around uh what does he need to do to win this just be aggressive and have good curve right yeah, aggression is key. You need to really push through as much as possible before big cards like uh, Cabal Shadow Priest start coming into play because they can be really destructive against your deck. Take really nice minions like Mana Worm, Flame Waker, etc. Big swings on the board. So you really need to make sure you're pushing through early with this deck. All right. So there's no way to kill this 3-2, but there's Zombie Chow. Can Doc have a really good turn just dealing with it? Yeah, I love the circle of healing here, just to make sure he fills up his hands on resource, and I would also like to see him play the zombie chow. Yep. Tempo, <laughs> Ma Tempo Mage capable of dealing with multiple minions at one time, but he really wants to bank that Velen's Chosen on a future turn here, so making sure he has minions in play is really important. Yeah. There's a free minion, and uh, Doc will be able to actually deal with this board and... And the develop a river croc, yes. Yeah. He doesn't have anything for turn 3, but his turn 4 and turn 5 looks uh, pretty good, and he already has a board. Death Lord, though. Death Lord might be troublesome. Top deck Frostbolt would be pretty insane. Oh, Mirror Entity is interesting. Acolyte of Pain uh, should be fine for... for Dog to get it. And do, do you actually pass at this point? 
Uh, I'm okay with, yeah, the, the river croc trade makes a lot of sense to me. You can kind of get blown out by Pyromancer potentially, but um, I think all things considered, it makes a lot of sense here. And uh, wow, this mage just managed to equip a Paladin secret. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> That's a good secret Still there. glowing purple though around the edges. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, still half a mage. All right, so Velen's Chosen does come down. Big old Death Lord here, 412 Death Lord in play. Think out the river crop, not respecting the Sorcerer's Apprentice whatsoever. Oh, and he's actually one, one mana off being able to just ping that off with the fireball and kill it off there. So that could have been very dangerous. There is a chance to kill it next turn, though. So uh, this turn, Shredder, I believe, yeah. is the best one. Yeah, if you, if you can't fireball it and kill it this turn, then you're definitely better off playing the Shredder, getting the minion down and potentially pushing for more damage. I, I like the pass again. So, Ness, uh, no now, oh, hang on, the, yeah, 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 now hang on. the pass, you have yeah. to be considering Holy Nova because yeah. with the spell yeah. power buff as well, Holy, Holy Nova is completely destructive that turn. Also, Ness knows what the what secret is because uh, Dog was playing duplicate before and uh, he killed the minion, so he knows it's not duplicate. Right, he also cast Balance Chosen and that didn't get blocked, so he knows yeah. it's not counter spell. So. so, what do you do now? You know, this is uh, Mirror Entity. Do you yep. just try to deny the draw, go Aqua of Pain, kill your own Acolyte being duplicated? Uh, it's possible, yeah. I mean, the alternative is Holy Nova, which seems weird, but it's actually not terrible here. It, it re restores the, the vitality to your Death Lord, deals with the first half of the Shredder. You can then pick up a decent trade afterwards. But I think the Acolyte of Pain play, because he wants to develop Justicar at some point, right? So that mirror entity needs to be cleared out with a small minion. Yeah, and do you ever, after the trade, do you ever actually flash it on? The, uh, the Death Lord back up, or are you okay with just the two healing here? So you'd have a 4-8. It'd be the difference between a 4-8 and getting it back to a 4-11. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, Fireball Ping is not playable on the following turn, which is what deals with a 4-11. So Flash Heal is definitely reasonable, actually. Yeah, it's not as if he's going to hang on for, for late game with Alcanai. At this point, you know, there's still a long way to go yet before he's going to push him for any kind of lethal. So I wouldn't mind the, uh, the Flash Heal there. Uh, just to really press, uh, push him out of that because now the the mage only requires frostbolt ping, yeah. uh, or you know, or a fireball, or you know, so on, so on. So it's very easy ways to kill this death lord. Yeah, flame cannon as well. Where yep. you get wins the 50-50, like all sorts of potential outs here for the mage. So Doug was able to pick up uh, two cards for that uh, arcane intellect. Like he was really low on cards overall, uh, but right now he has a chance to draw cards. So does Ness with that acolyte. Holding on to the burn right now, not um, allowing the the greed of killing the Death Lord and getting the extra minion to get him too carried away with the situation. Just develops the Lotheb on the board, locks out the spells. But uh, Ness, honestly, this turn is fine not playing spells. He can just develop that Justicar onto the board and go from there. Yeah, and I even think if, if Lotheb didn't have its ability, I think playing Justicar on this board seems pretty good anyway. You just lock it in as early as possible and start just being able to use those hero powers on either your minions or yourself, just to heal up for four, because it's so much so much bigger impact against a deck like Tempo Mage, which a lot of the time requires on a bit of a burst finish with like, you know, Fireball, Frostbolts and whatever. I'm just thinking like, what's the best minion for Dark to get from Death Lord? Probably Antonidas. And all, because then he can still Fireball trade. Duplicate on this board is Pretty juicy looking. Uh, doesn't have the mana to fit it in with that fireball though, but these are two great cards to potentially try and set up a duplicate on, unless he wants to commit to that long term Antonidas duplicate plan that he had in the <laughs> previous have, control matchup. You can have a crazy turn if you attack with the Shredder into Death Lord, get Sorcerer's Apprentice, and then Fireball. Damn. Alright, sure, <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> Definitely uh, the right play. Might, for might work. <laughs> yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that the uh, the time for games with this Death Lord is over, and uh, Dog probably does have to commit to killing it here. Looks like he's going to use the front half of the Shredder. Uh, he's going to use both minions and hold on to the Fireball. Gets oh. the Flame Waker. Wow. All now right. Hold on to the Fireball. Uh, I think like the other two spells here are fine: Arcane Intellect and Duplicate, or yeah. Arcane Missiles, Arcane Intellect and Ping. Because you don't really want to play Duplicate with it's a Vitality. It's just the bit with the Acolyte. You're gonna just throw p probably three cards at the Priest. Yeah, that's, the, that's the only worry. Exactly. I don't mind Fireball here on, on the Acolyte. I think okay. it's fine. Sure. Yeah. Do you use Arcane Missiles as well? It uh, depends where these these go, right? If two hit. Yeah. Yeah, you do. If two hit, you five missiles Ping instead. And uh, this just has to die, absolutely. Uh, Vitality Totem, though, it wasn't the best card to get against the Priest. He wanted something with, uh, with attack. 
Well, that seems like a solid draw. Yeah, that's a really good card. I suggest we play that card this turn. Even uh, flash heal. Or can I soul breeze flash heal on the on the flame waker hero power down the five one? You're in pretty good shape. Yeah. Well, we can even just uh, hero power the two four and flash heal the five one. That works too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be option about it. Wow. Is there anything else you want to do this turn? It's so good. You're still at um, 26. Healthy. And Doug will just need to arc an intellect and try to get something really Yeah, and, and it's interesting Ness won't be aware of how important that turn was with Duplicate in Doug's hand. You know, a Lotheb and a Flame Waker when Duplicate could be equipped next turn is huge. And he cleared off the two danger minions in the deck or two of the danger minions in the deck. And what's interesting here is that I'm sure Ness has paid attention and knows that Duplicate is in his opponent's deck. That Cabal Shadow Priest might <laughs> might just get him into a mess here if he's oh, not man. paying attention. Oh, please. Is he going please, to take no. it? Ness is laughing. How does this interaction work? Do I heal myself or do I kill myself? <laughs> yeah. But I, I was just... Do, do, does he Cabal hit face and then hero power his own, his own Alcanine right. to kill it off and yeah. then just uh, accept the heal? But just, just to finish the thought, you know, Duplicate is a card that he knows is in Dog's deck. And as long as that Vitality Totem sets around on the board, he knows he can never get a high value play with a Duplicate because whenever the Secret comes down now, he can just choose to kill the Vitality yeah. Totem okay. then and give him a and, and the Priest duplicate. is pretty cool about the Mage extending the game, right? right <laughs> you know, exactly. Oh no, you're healing when I don't care about your health. Exactly, yeah. So I think it would have been beneficial to, to Ness there, honestly, just to hold the Duplicate on the board because now the Duplicate on the Ethereal Conjurer actually has potential to do some do some real work here for dog that's not flame strike from the conjurer nope it is another frostbolt though which is a useful utility spell against this board frostbolt ping's able to take care of the orcani a follow a second frostbolt is able to take care of one of the other minions but there's a lot of damage actually coming from uh, from ness here if you attack with your zombie chow into the conjurer that's five five of flash heal 14 with the hero power and then six that's 20 damage you can leave your opponent six yeah, I thought it was pretty interesting they actually played the Pyro. Because the Pyro, with him having the bigger board, the Pyro doesn't really do anything beneficial with its ability at the moment. Right. Um, but I guess he just decided that, you know what, it's a minion that hits for three, and I feel like I want to turn the pressure on. I just feel like there's a lot of crazy stuff you can do with Pyro later on, especially versus Tempo Mage, when they're, he's still not seeing a lot of the lower uh, health minions. Yeah, I think Ness is just sensing that he has the initiative now. Yeah. So he's just playing out the dudes, trying to dominate the board and just you know win on Tempo here more than anything else, which is a possibility. But now he does have that consideration to make against the... Um, against the Ethereal Conjurer, which is now going to get duplicated, but he is going to choose to max out on the burst damage here, potentially setting up lethal for himself yeah. on the following turn. 20 damage to face is uh, a lot. Yeah, and the thing is here, duplicating the Ethereal Conjurer, you know, they're a good minion in, in a vacuum in itself, but we're, they're five mana. Like, what are you going to draw that's going to save the day? Like, maybe a, a Frost Nova, potentially, and just hope he doesn't have the burst from hand? Right, well, the I thing is, you're playing versus Priest, so you, if you're able to deal with this board, Staying on six is still safe. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. exactly the point I wanted to make, Nims, which is if the rest of his hand is able to deal with this board here, and then he then has those two Ethereal Conjurers to build back up the board, suddenly with six health, this mage is actually looking in really good shape against Priest. Oh, oh my is just... god. <laughs> is this a big comeback turn? But he can just buy himself another turn because he, he does have just Frostbolt on the Death Lord. That, so he's not going to take two damage if he wants, and that's fine. Oh, we can actually just kill it. What am I talking about? Yeah, yeah. the Mana Worm. Frostbolt yeah. Mana Worm what am I will talking kill the about? Death Lord. He fits in the Ethereal Conjurer into the curve as well. So oh, he Ink Antonidas. Some, he can pick up some high value options here. Forgotten Torch is fantastic yeah. right here. Even Flame, flame Strike is a, you know, an emergency switch sort of thing. If, if the Priest does play a few more minions, he can just be like, right, Flame Strike, done. And this is like, where is my second Okanai? I need some damage here. Why am I playing a priest? <laughs> <laughs> Why am I playing a priest? A profound question asked, asked, asked by, by many, many. <laughs> Hearthstone players throughout the history of time. Okay. What, are, what are the outs? Dog is at six. So yep. basically, Okanai is lethal if he goes for Holy Nova and then sets up Okanai hero power. Mm -hmm. And he'll have still some time because he has the hero power to heal if he wants to. But a 4-4 Azure Drake, well... Oh my god, this is... What, another tense game? 
Harrison Jones is a blank in a way. Harrison Jones does nothing. Shadow of Death and Holy Nova can reduce some of the damage on the board here, but these are some of his last resources in hand now. So if he throws them away for such lackluster use as what he sees here, then Dog is basically just free to go all in on the and, board following up. And also, it's almost certain that that second conjure has been played. Yep. And Ness is aware of it. That 6-3 is coming down next turn 90%. Yep. Um, so he has to be aware of, like, if he could magically clear the board this turn, then, well, there's a 6-3 there's coming down next turn. Like, and he has to then plan to deal with that because at the moment, he cannot even get close enough to killing Dog this day uh, in the next turn or so. So um, do you call Innova this, this turn at all and play Harrison Jones to have a threat on board and uh, to open yourself to an Okanai Soul Priest finish? Or I, is there anything else you can do? I actually think you have to because... One, you know, the Chondra can give, will give the uh, the major spell, and that Mana Worm is going to start hitting very, very hard, and it is only on one health, so I do think you do have to play it here. What's the best spell you can get from Chondra? Is it Ice Block, maybe? Potentially. I think it actually yeah, is, yeah. because right here, the out, now that the Holy Nova has been cast, that needed to happen at some point in the game. Now we're at 4 HP as the Mage player, so the Orcanai Soul Priest draw at any point is lethal here. So if Ice Block is picked up off the Ethereal Conjurer, then to pop the block, the Soul Priest will have to be committed to the board, and it just becomes oh, one-off damage, because after that, Dog will just be able to kill it, remove it from the board, and that's all of the Priest bur Burst gone. There's Doesn't no. get it. Effigy is pretty nice on this board overall, though. Definitely, but Ness can still take it. Just one Okanite Soul oh Priest draw, and the game is over. Is there lethal for next turn? Power oh, shield. power shield! Guys, do chance. you believe? Do you believe? Oh! He got oh, it! He got it! Nice soul priest for the win! <laughs> this is the Woo! champion! Defeats Dog and it was so close. He almost came back. That was the only out in the deck. Unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable. We just saw Ness leap up from the chair in excitement. I'm not going to lie. I, I need a minute myself. <laughs> Remember point. earlier when I said it was rare that I only had one word to describe what was going on? <laughs> right now, I have zero. So yeah. we have reached full saturation. <laughs> Congratulations to Ness. Yeah. Incredible story. Relative unknown UK player makes his way through one of the biggest tournaments ever held in the UK. And he is the Insomnia True Silver champion. He started. Actually, starting in, that's all I've got. Starting, yeah. in December, <sighs> like, starting in December to show his skills where he went to the top eight, he got eliminated right there. Two days ago, he went for Swiss, and everybody was like, hey, Ness, again, like he got to the top 16, that's pretty good. Like, Ness, you can actually play Hearthstone. And then top 16, he just went through the, through the group stages. Top eight, defeated Life Coach, proved himself, and then just Kamlan, Dog, He's here. He's the champion. And also, one of the uh, very few players that I've even seen play Priest all weekend, actually. There's been very few Priests. I don't know the exact number, but definitely the only Priest that made it anywhere close to this far in the tournament. Right, and he, and, and he plays the deck because he likes it. Yeah, exactly. He likes Priest, so exactly. it's like, I'm going to play the deck I like. And you've got to respect that in the first place, coming to a tournament like this and just be like, I'm going to play a deck that isn't really known to be that great, but just because I like it, and then winning the whole thing Fair enough. Yeah, Not only the priest, argue. he also brought this Warlock deck that was absolutely different. Yeah. Druid was uh, pretty much standard, but uh, the whole lineup. And uh, was he playing a different lineup in the Swiss part? Do you guys know? I believe it was more or less the same. I think the yeah. Warlock and the Priest were there for sure, and I imagine Druid was the third deck. Yeah, we know it was, in fact, because he beat Dog 3-0 with the Druid in, in Swiss. So I think it was just the and here he is. lineup. And here, here he is. is our glorious our champion, winner. holding <laughs> it down, defending the shores for the UK. Ness, congratulations, man. I believe Nimch has a mic for I you I have here. a mic for you, so if you can put the trophy on the middle of the table. The middle. <laughs> just the middle. Perfect. Awesome. Good job. Oh, uh, all right. We're good. We're good. We're good. Hey, the good. trophy's here. Here's your mic. Just uh, close to your mouth. It's, it's on. It's good. It's good. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Yo. Welcome to the, to the desk. Are you ready to cast the next match? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I've done some casting before. <laughs> Ness, congratulations. You're the champion. I will, not, I will not ask how does it feel, but uh, I will ask you, do you have anything to say to the lovely audience that was supporting you here live and the audience in front of the, their PCs? I'd like to give a shout out to all my friends and everyone who supported me and to my team, Team Torpedo, and my teammate Ball Control who helped me practice and prepare for the tournament. And also all my friends back home, my friends online, just uh, thanks to everybody. It means the world for supporting me. That's, that's amazing, man. And uh, can you take us 
can you tell us why this lineup? You brought a really unique lineup with a Warlock deck that nobody's seen before, a Priest and a Druid deck. Uh, why did it work for you? So when people bring their, their lineups, they can't prepare for everything. And Priest is a strong class, which people don't usually account for. It usually, uh, they just can't, they can't make their lineup be everything. And Priest has a really a lots of good matchups. It has some bad ones as well, but uh, I have Druid for that because Druid just wins. It's just Druid things. <laughs> Druid just wins. All right, so I, I want to ask you at least one technical question. If you don't remember, it's cool. Just yeah, say you don't remember. But like at the start of the Priest versus Rogue game, you had um, one drop coin, Velen's chosen in your hand, and you chose not to go down that line. So what like what was your long term game plan in the matchup? What were you looking to do? Um, I was a bit worried about Sap. If I committed too much of any Sap to my Cleric and my Velens, I've kind of wasted a few turns. And my game plan was to hold on to everything until I had something on board which I could heal and then uh, draw cards that way and just draw the rest of my deck to win the game. But, Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, one, one last thing, I'll let Raven ask any questions he has, but you asked me beforehand to uh, plug your social media a little bit. <laughs> so now that you have the opportunity to do it yourself, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you? Okay, um, you can find me on Twitter. It's TPG underscore Ness. Uh, I only have 170 followers. Boom. So, <laughs> so it'd be nice to get some more. <laughs> Just a couple more, maybe. Just a couple more, maybe. <laughs> okay, so uh, my main question for me is, because uh, I, I knew you were going to play Priest from, from the start, that's just no surprise at all. Um, but like, the, so the Warlock deck is quite interesting, because this pretty much, um, okay, I don't know if, if you and Ball Control made it together, or if you just got it from somewhere else and just decided to play it. Like, wh where did that come from, and why did you choose to pick it over, and uh, we see the power of Zoo, you know, Demon Lock, uh, Reno Lock, there's so many strong Warlock decks, and you chose this one, how, how come? Yeah, so me and Ball Control made it together. I mean, he mainly made it, and then I looked at it and thought, I'll make one or two changes here and there. The idea behind it is that nobody really knows what it is, so it confuses people. They don't know what to play around. They think I might have Giants or Reno, or uh, sometimes they think I'm Zoo, and they play really defensively. And it, it's good to confuse people like that. because it just confuse they, Warlock. Yeah, <laughs> confuse are you, Warlock. Are you, are you like trying it. to emulate the Zoo experience? Not Ish. really, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just trying to control the board. Um, I play lots of good minions, I play them on curve, I have a few removal in case things get out of hand. And yeah, you just control the board and win from there. It's just like, um, it's not like playing an old school deck. You just, no combo or anything, just fight for board control and win from there. I have good news for you. Uh, not only you've won this amazing trophy, but you will also get $10,000. Uh, do you have any plans uh, what to do with this money? Um, I, I have no plans, I, don't, I really don't know. <laughs> I did not expect to get this far. Uh, I'm sure I'll find something nice to spend the money on. Are you going to travel to more tournaments, maybe DreamHacks in the future? Yeah, definitely. Hopefully my team will send me there because I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go to any tournament now after winning this one. <laughs> Impor hey, important question, Ness. One final important question. Drinks are on you tonight, right? Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he actually said yes. Oh, wow. He actually said we yes. Weren't yeah. Yeah. This we weren't expecting this answer. You realize you've just said that to everyone watching <laughs> in the crowd, right? I I mean, 10,000 is a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I love it. It's just like, yeah, yeah, the whole crowd can have drinks. That's fine. Yeah. My that's, guy that's and the great. guy. <laughs> well, I have to say that Ness is a great guy, definitely, especially because he promises drinks. Yep. Uh, there is a, one more small bonus. You're getting 15 HCT points, which means you're probably qualified for the spring prelims. Probably. Did you have any points before? I already had eight points, so I'm pretty sure I would have qualified anyway, because 10 points, uh, two from two more legend seasons. Probably would have been enough, but now I think I definitely get it. So. Now we can actually have a chance to get sponsored to to be f uh, to fly to an event. Hope so. Get like, was it top four or top three? I think top eight. Top eight. Top yeah, eight. top eight. Top eight. Well, right. it's only to London, right? That's where the prelim takes place. Yeah, yeah. It's something. It's still nice. Yeah, it's still nice. <laughs> definitely. All right, guys. Any more questions for Ness? No, just congratulations, man. You, uh, well deserved and well played all weekend. It's really impressive. Yeah, same Thank thing. you very much. Congrats. Crowned yourself officially as the king of insomnia after just having the unofficial title of top eight, top eight finalist. But now you have that winner's medal. So congrats to you, man. Well done. Yeah. Next time I'll get top four. Because then I've had top eight, top four, <laughs> second and first. Okay, Good man. Fingers, yeah. crossed, <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that you can actually make it. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So, Ness, congratulations again. You're the champion. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining us on the, couch, uh, on the casting couch. We obviously also had Lothar and Noxious with us. So, um, well, it was a uh, long three days, a lot of games. You played the most, probably, and uh, everything comes to an end. So we have our champion. Everybody's happy. Insomnia is still going on uh, behind us. But uh, 
that will be it for today. So thank you so much for watching everybody in front of the computers. That was Insomnia. We have our champion. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Have a good night. I'll see you guys in the next tournament.